This Tucker County Sports Talk.com broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. Proud to support Tucker County Sports. Jim's All-Star, hot food, cold beverages, and gas. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Wishing all of Tucker County High School Mountain Lion athletes a safe and successful season. Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. Performance Collision with locations in Parsons and Morgantown. Robert Estates Incorporated, serving all of your general contracting needs. This Fargo Tucker County Sports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. United Proud Financial support Service, Tucker County Sports. Auto Life, Commercial Insurance, All Star, Hot Food, Cold Beverages, and Gas. This Tucker County Sports.com broadcast is Tucker also County being brought to you by Wishing Mr. All pizza of Tucker of County High School Mount Lion Avenue. Home of the Mr. Big. More than just pizza, try our subs, salads, and wings. Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, your local rustic fence provider. Kidwell Auto Parts, with locations in Parsons and Thomas. Bob Gutshaw, your local State Farm insurance agent. Cortland Acres, choose us for your long-term care, rehab, and therapy needs. Mountain Valley Bank, locations in Parsons, Elkins, and Mill Creek. Sirianni's Cafe, with locations in Davis and Canaan Valley. And by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting Tucker County High School action. Right here on your home of the mountain lines, TuckerCountySports.com. Welcome everyone to a beautiful late summer evening here at R.H. Armstrong Memorial Field at the Class of 84 Alumni Stadium in Parsons, West Virginia, where the humidity is very high. The temperatures are right where you think they would be in the late, in the late month of August. But here we are, October 15th, ready for some late summer football. Southern Garrett, Maryland, comes down uh, comes down Route 219 to take on our Tucker County Mount Lions. Chris George and Dave Helmick with you here. And Dave, uh, it's a golden opportunity here for Tucker to uh, get their second consecutive win. Overall, that would be their third win if they can get it tonight. And you look at the back half of the schedule with Gilmer County, Petersburg, and South Harrison, there's a chance here for a potential, potential late playoff burst, or late playoff uh, race here. But the thing about it is, got to take care of business tonight because the scary thing about this game is, and A.J. Rapp will talk about this here in a little bit, Southern may be 0-5, but, boy, they play a tough schedule. Yeah, they do, Chris. They come into this uh, contest winless, but they've played – a tougher schedule than Tucker County has. Uh, you know, Mountain Ridge team that's probably the best Mountain Ridge team they've had in many years. Northern no slouch there either. You know, they a Moorfield team that actually, uh, you know, same results as us as a, a blowout win. So, yes, they come in with a, a tough schedule. They come in with a with with a winless record, but you can't let that keep you from playing tonight. Yeah, it should be a good one here tonight. Southern has a ton of changes since the start of the year. They have a new quarterback. Their previous quarterback has now been moved to the offensive line and defensive line. So enter Tyler Strouser. He was splitting some time with Zach Schock earlier in the season, but Strouser will take over. They've got a new running back in the name of Austin Spiker. He moves over from wing back. they got a new wing back in Brent Lemme. So you take a look at this this Southern team, it's a mix and match. And I was talking to assistant coach Dan Holler and also head coach John Nazarod, and, you know, they've got 16 kids dressed tonight. They, they had more than that. COVID has been a concern. It's hit a couple players on the team. They said the biggest problem with, with Southern this year is they've got a bunch of kids homeschooled and aren't allowed to play football. You know how the state rules work with that. And, you know, and soccer's also got a lot of kids out in Garrett County at Southern High School as well. So you are what you are. But you know what? One thing we know about this Southern team, they're going to be disciplined and they're going to be tough. Yeah, they are, Chris. Uh, they always come in and they always you know, run the ball down your throat at power football. Tucker County Southern been playing for years. It's a rivalry. Last year, because of COVID, they didn't play. But if you go back uh, uh, several years, is it, it, it's the rivalry that's happened, and you know that's uh, a rivalry that's it's been played for a long time. So you know you, you throw the records out in a rivalry game, and I, I feel say I, I still say that's the case tonight. Throw the records out, the uh, these teams are going to fight it out. Head coach AJ Rapp is coming up next right here on TuckerCountySports.com.
with Chris George and head coach AJ Rapp for pregame here tonight. Coach, just wanted to get with you before the game, talk a little bit about. Uh, obviously, you had a <coughs> week off to uh, to uh, heal up, uh, work on some things, uh, whatever that may be. But last time out, a good win here at home, homecoming, a fourteen nothing win over Pendleton County. Talk a little bit about that game. Yeah, I thought the kids bounced. I mean, it, it was fun that night because you know homecoming. They were excited and uh, you know getting getting another win this year. That's that's a bonus on that night. And you know the kids played hard. Um, you know we did everything. You know Coach Anderson did a great job there, keeping the defense up. You know and uh, you know pitched a shutout. And you know, I told him I said you know I used to always tease Coach Echo when he was here. I, if he kept him under fit forty, I could beat him. But I said now you got to keep him at zero so I can beat him. So, <laughs> He, uh, he was laughing at that. But, yeah, I was real proud of the kids. They played hard. Uh, you know, we polished up some things in these off two weeks here. You know, we had some – every game we had some mistakes. But, you know, we got some key guys that are young guys playing in key spots. And, uh, you know, it's hard to get. You know, I worked with Jared a lot. He's, he's still got that middle school mentality where he's been faster than everybody else. And he, he tries to run the sweeps on everything. And uh, I got two big blue barrels this week at 55-gallon barrels and showed him where the four-hole was. So, we're hoping he busts it on tonight. So. Speaking of those young guys, you mentioned Jared Real, the freshman's really starting to come on. Also, your sophomore quarterback Ethan Rosenall's passed for 730 yards this year. Uh, we're, we're halfway through, plus the game. Talk about those two guys and, and the maturation process from a year ago with Ethan, and of course Jared from really game one to now. Well, I knew Jared was coming up. I mean, I watched him all the way through middle school. You know, and I know he had his brother Brett several years ago, and you know he's just a tough kid, and he's a. Uh, you know, he moves the ball well, and you know, like I said, if I always tell people if I had him, if he was at 200 pounds or something like that, there, there'd be no stopping him. So, and Ethan, he's probably the most improved player in a long time that I've coached. I mean, last year, uh, you know, he's a smart kid, but last year he just didn't have the athletics to go with it. Uh, this year, he don't have all the athletics yet, but he does have. He, he knows how to compensate, and he, he's learned the offense a lot better, and he knows when to let loose the football now. Yeah, I thought you guys did a really good job of getting out on them early, and then it almost seemed like uh, defensively it was a bend but don't break night. I mean, you can let them inside your 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 side of the field three or four times, but yet your defense stepped up and stopped. Yeah, it. I mean, we had some big plays early. JJ picked that one off, you know, on, on their own thirty yard on our on their side of the thirty yard line, and we picked it off. And you know, it was our first led to our first score and. Uh, Wes Rodman had some nice catches. You know, Wes has really come on these last couple of weeks. I really seen him bloom at uh, Berkeley Springs. You know, he he he's grasping on. He's become a hitter. You know, and and I've watched him lay a few people out since then. It's kind of shocking out of Wes if you knew Wes before. But yes. you know, Wes is a violent kid now. We'll say. <laughs> well, and he and he led you in tackling. Uh, I believe in that Pendleton game. So well, that's a, probably a surprise. For well, you too. It's, it's a surprise, but it's, it's it's not what you want to see as a coach that your safety leads you in tackling. But if you watch him, he comes up hard a lot, and he, he's making those tackles at linebacker depth. So, you know, that, that's not a bad thing. Tonight's opponent, Southern Garrett, Maryland. Of course, rough year for Southern, 0-5 coming in. Uh, they have shown a little bit of everything on offense. They've shown some spread. They've shown some wing tee. They've shown a little bit of everything. Now they're down to 16 healthy players. I just got their starters literally today, and it looks like they're going to stay in that wing tee set, according to what I saw. Talk about – I know you saw the Moorfield film. Talk about what you saw and uh, what problems they may present you tonight. Uh, it's Southern. You know, you can look at their record. That's why I've been telling the boys for two weeks. You can look at their record, but, man, they played some studs. You know, they played yeah. – uh, I mean, the only common opponent we have is Moorfield, and, of course, Moorfield whipped us too. So, you know, you can't take them lightly. They're coached well. Um, they're always a physical football team that runs the ball real well. And, uh, you know, I, I told them if we can get them where they have to pass, that, that's what we want to do. And, you know, so that's our goal tonight is to try to get them to pass the ball. Well, thanks, head coach A.J. Raff, for joining us in the pregame. We had more of that pregame interview. We may try to get to that some of that later on at halftime here. We're going to have an early start here. They're going to start about five minutes early. So while they do that, uh, we're going to be right here for the action. As Southern Garrett, Maryland won the coin toss, and back deep to return is Austin Spiker and also K1 Clark. And they're ready to start things out here at Tucker County tonight. Yep. Ready to get it underway here at RH Armstrong Memorial Field Class of 1984 Stadium. And we also want to thank St. George Medical Clinic for the video, live YouTube video 
being brought to you by St. George Medical Clinic. Ethan Rosenhall to kick it off. Line drive kick angles to the far side of the field, picked up by Clark at the 15-yard line, and he's up over the 25 and tackled shy of the 30-yard line, brought down there by J.J. Knott, and that's where the Southern Garrett Maryland Rams take over. First down and 10 to shy of their 30-yard line. Out comes quarterback Tyler Strouser. And his wing T offense may see some shotgun spread as well. They do a little bit of everything this year at Southern, although Tucker's game plan is to try to make them throw the football tonight because they are a much better running football team. Only 12 points, though, scored this year, and that came against Moorfield and Allegheny of Maryland. They operate out of the wing T formation. Handoff, top of the eye, coming right up the middle, off the right side, down to the 35-yard line, comes Austin Spiker. Tackle made by... Racer Channel for Tucker County. He was the first contact there. Nice game for Southern on first down. Yeah, good carry out to the 35. That's a seven-yard pickup for Spiker. And a second three. And that's what they want on first down is get three yards or more, and they got it that time. They're going to split a receiver out wide to the left, wing back to the right. Offset eye behind the quarterback under his center. That's Tyler Strouser. He's going to hand it off off the left side, and the first down is made by K1 Clark. As he gets down to the 40-yard line, and it's enough for the Rams' first down pick up on the play of five more yards. So we've seen both Clark and Spiker early on in this drive, two plays, first down Rams. This time they split Clark out wide as one of the setbacks in the backfield. Big fullback, Braden Sloan, is behind him as well. And he'll give it to that fullback Sloan as he stumbles his way across the 40 and tripped up there. Good tackle that time by the Mount Lions. Bringing him down is Gavin Mullinex, a six foot, 200 pound sophomore. And if Mullinex had not brought him down at the 43, he could have had a lot more yards. Yeah, good job by Gavin to step up into that uh, block there and make that tackle. So three possession or three plays here, all three different running backs carrying the football. Now they'll split. Gavin Warnick out wide to the right, wing to the left. Middle back, middle backer blitz by the mount lines. Jared Reel is in there, just missed him, but Racer Channel is going to bring down K1 Clark at the 44, a pickup of a yard on the play, and to bring up third down and five, or yeah, maybe they, six. Yeah, they give him a yard, and uh, really thought he lost yardage there, but they give him forward progress. Uh, good job there by a linebacker to blitz and cover up the uh, – the run play, but also Isaac Channel in there to finish it up. Well, the Rams go to the air for the first time tonight. We shall see. Gavin Warnick, a really good athlete, splits out wide left. Wing back sets up to the right. That is Clark. Backs are split behind the quarterback. Tyler Strouser, he's going to hand it to the wing back, coming from right to left, and he has the first down across the 50-yard line and drop there, and that is K1 Clark, who lined up as a wing back, carried it from the right off the left tackle. And he gets the first down, dropped on the play by the Mountain Lions. Dom Mullinex, it's the Rams. They're going to say fourth down. I think they'll measure this. It looks like it's a first down to me. Yeah, they mark it just a little short. Let's see if the nose of the football gives them the first down as the chain crew coming out there to measure. It appears to me he has it, but trust me, folks, I've been wrong more times than I've been right. So, 9.31 left in this first quarter in Tucker County. Trying to keep Southern from picking up the first here as they, they'll measure it out. It's going to be very close. They extend, no, it's going to be a short. They're going, they have to get over the midfield stripe. So it's going to be fourth down and a half yard. Yeah, I'm watching that replay, Chris, here on the feed. Is That's the right call. He bounced after he went down, and the bounce went over the 50, but his knees were down before the 50, and uh, it was a good spot. You're Southern, you're 0-5, you've scored two touchdowns all year. You got the ball at midfield, fourth and short. Why not go for it? Warnick splits out wide left. Backs are split, wing T formation. Strouser may take this himself. He does not. He hands it off, and they drop him in the backfield, but forward lean by Clark may get him the spot, but it's going to be all so close. Good job on penetration by the Mountain Lions that time. It looks like he'll have the first down. And Knott's brought him down. And that spot was up to the official, and that should be close. They had him stopped at the 48 and a half, but forward lean by Clark was able to get that football moving forward, and that's where he fell, and it's going to depend on the – literally it's going to depend on the spot. 
Oh, boy, it's close. I think he's short. Let's see. Depending where it was spotted, he had to get across the 50 for the first down. And they extend the chains, and it's short. Yes, sir. It's short by three inches. Wow. What a defensive stand from Tucker to stop him on fourth down. Yeah, I knew that he had to get across the 50. Problem was, most of the football was resting on the 50, and that's how much he needed, and that's how much he did not get. Tucker County takes over first and 10. Big stop for the Mountain Lions. And they've done that several times this year, Chris. They've held uh, teams short or on fourth and short. They've held them and turned over on downs, and they do it again. Out comes Ethan Rosenall, the sophomore quarterback. has passed for 730 yards this year, four touchdowns. Backs are split, two receivers right, one left. Snap back to the sophomore. He fakes the handoff. He's going to throw the ball. Deep route down the near sideline. Maddox Anderson leaps in the air. It's incomplete. And should have kept running. <laughs> should have kept running. You're right. Coverage on the play that time by Austin Spiker. And had Anderson kept running instead of jumping early, he would have caught that in stride. Yep, it would have in his bread basket, and he would have scored. I think he misjudged Ethan Rosenall's arm strength, man. And Ethan threw it hard, and he threw it well. Uh, you know, what, 40 yards in the air at least, and a nice throw. It's a 5-3 front for the Rams. A ninth guy in the box on the far side, and they're going to hand the ball off, and right through the middle comes the freshman. It's Jared Reel across the 45 and down to the Southern Ram 43-yard line. That's a pickup of seven on the play. Yeah, good job there by Jared Reel. Good job by this offensive line moving, making a hole. Jared Reel, a very good freshman running back, shifty, fast, and Coach Rapp, we didn't get hear that part of the interview, but he's trying to work on him uh, – Maybe we did, but he's trying to work on him uh, getting more inside instead of trying to run everything out. Southern shows a blitz from their inside linebacker, and here he comes. They're going to hand it off. J.J. Knotts is hit and dropped back. Good push on the play up front by the Rams, and stopping him shy is Brandon Sloan, a junior inside linebacker who was one of the two inside backers coming on that blitz. And they're going to put the football down at the line of scrimmage, no gain. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, fourth down now. It looks like Tucker is going to be in punt formation here. J.J. Knotts drops back to punt. J.J. Knotts will punt. This is a great place for a fake if you'd want to run it, but it's early in the game. Back deep for the Rams is the returner. who we do. It's blocked. It's not going to get to the returner. Ball punt is blocked and picked up. Not yet. Kicked in front and finally picked up at the 30-yard line and down to the 25. It's going to come back because the the punt was blocked by the Rams and someone illegally kicked the ball forward. So it's going to come back, but it'll be Southern Ram football, and I believe that was Gavin Warnick who blocked the punt. Yeah, just too slow getting the punt off was J.J. Knotts, and the snap was good, and uh, he just couldn't get it off quick enough, and uh, Southern blocked it. Illegal touching is the official call on that, so they'll bring this back to midfield but it will stay with Southern after the block kick. And it looked like it was Warnick in there. It also could have been Sloan. Yeah. He was in there. There was a third Ram in there as well. Big play there. And then now you're, if you're Coach A.J. Rapp, you're probably kicking yourself maybe for not trying to go for it there. Fourth down in about four or five, but uh, they elect the punt, and the line doesn't do their job. They let, let the uh, Southern through, and they get a block punt here. And, they're in business here in Tucker County Territory. Okay, it's a five-yard penalty, not ten. My apologies. So they'll move it back to the Tucker 45-yard line. It'll be first and ten for the Rams. Warnick splits out wide to the right. Backs are split, wing left. And they're going to hand it off. It's the wing back coming from left to right, and he's going to get down to the 40-yard line and stop shy of the 39, and carrying that football is Kwan Clark, the senior. They'll give him the 40, pick up on the play of five, second and five. Racer Channel in there on the stop. Boy, he's really playing some good football, isn't he, Dave, as a sophomore on both sides, the yeah. offense and defense. Yeah, he's playing well. He's he's uh, He was their leading receiver there for, well, pretty much the whole season, and he's uh, playing better on defense the last few games. Same formation, receiver split wide right. Backs are split. Quarterback rolls right. That's the field side. Fires, post corner out over the head of the intended receiver, Warnick, at the 20-yard line in complete. It'll bring up third down and five. First pass of the evening for Strouser. So a little bootleg right to the field side, incomplete. Receiver was open, but the ball was well overthrown. 
Yeah, just like you said, just got it. Just, you almost tell Chris he's, he doesn't throw it much. Uh, he's rolling to his right. That momentum he didn't make up for it, and then it, he airmailed it. Lornick splits out to the left. Tight end left as well. Wing right. Backs are split, and we got movement up front. Yeah, they moved early, and they called it. Normally, they don't call it in those formations, but they call this one. False start against the Rams. Moving back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down and ten. It's cross, a big penalty. Cross backbone mountain, and you won't get that call. <laughs> but there's stay a lot of stuff the, you'll get on, on the other stay side. Stay on this side of the mountain, and you'll, you'll get it called. Remember the last game we did over Southern a few years back? Oh, boy. <laughs> Remember well, the pile line being hit with the football, and they said he was out of, out at the yeah. one. Well, that, you know, it's uh, – they said it was out of bounds, remember? Across the state line, you get different stuff, too. Third down, 10. They're going to go to the eye formation, alpha wing right. Handoff, top the eye. K1 Clark is hit and dropped by Knotts. Yeah, Owen Knotts with a great play there. He was taking on the blocker, and, and he just reached out and grabbed the runner and knocked him down. Good job, O. That's a second play for Owen Knotts in this game. A punt formation now for Southern. And the punt of football is Clark, and he punts it away. High kick, good hang time on it, and Anderson's going to let it bounce, and it's going to take a tucker roll and stop at the 18-yard line. That's where the mount lines take over, first down and 10 at their own 18-yard line. 6-18 to go, quarter number one, no score. Southern Garrett, Maryland, and Tucker County. Chris George and Dave Helmick with you here in Parsons. Yep, and uh... – Good job by the Tucker D, Chris. Uh, gave up that that blocked punt, but the defense stepped up there, got the stop, and forced the punt. Now the offense back on the field. Ready to rock and roll. Right, Tucker's going to spread the field here. Two receivers go wide, wide to the right, two receivers wide to the left. Single setback to the right of the quarterback, Rosenall, who's in the gun. Ethan drops the pass. They're setting up a screen. It's going to be caught by J.J. Knotts. Behind the line of scrimmage, eludes one. He's at the 25 to the 30 and tackled right across that 30-yard line. Good screen out to the left by J.J. Knotts. Pretty decent blocking out in front. All right, big pancake block by Gavin Monex. Just absolutely obliterated the guy he was on and uh, opened up that screen play there. I'll take it out to the 26. That's a gain of eight. Second and two. That's a play the Tuckers always love to run out of that spread formation is that delayed screen to the running back. Now they're going to have split backs in the gun. Two receivers to the left, one out to the right, and the left side of the line moves early, and that's where Owen Porter's at now. Keep in mind, Owen Porter's making the start tonight at left tackle for Tyler Collar, who is injured and will not play, so there you go. He goes a little bit early. And they'll move it back to the 21-yard line, and it'll be second and six. That time, Chris, it was Owen Knotts that jumped. Was it Knotts? Okay. Shotgun with split backs. And they're going to hand it off, and up the middle comes J.J. Knotts, and he gets a good running room across the 25 and down to the 29-yard line. It's going to be close to the first down. They may give it to him. We'll see. If it's the 30-yard line, they will. Or, I mean, the 29-yard line, and they do. First down, good run by J.J. Knotts. Pick up of eight. Yeah, nice run by Knotts. And that line again, Chris, uh, with a nice hole there for the mountain line runner. Same formation, split backfield, two receivers left. Rose and all. Southern shows blitz. They do not come, and they're going to run the ball, and they tried to pull the left side of the line out in front to block and hit and drop for no gain on the play, maybe a yard loss. Couldn't tell if that was real or not. I think it was not. Second down, 11 coming up, maybe back to the line. They're going to stay right back to the line of scrimmage, second and 10. You like to see Tucker challenge these corners out here. They're kind of left out on the island with uh, Southern loading the box here. Yeah, and they're playing one single high safety as well. Second and ten. Snap back to Rosenall. He fakes, rolls right, fires across the middle. Incomplete for Anderson at the 38. Yeah, and that time Rosenall not have his feet set. 
Kind of a fadeaway pass there across the middle. Lucky it uh, fell incomplete. Yeah, you're right. Very good point, Dave. Didn't have his feet set there. Rolling to his right. Fired a missile across the middle. A little behind the receiver. Third down and ten coming up. Two receivers go wide to the left. J.J. Knotts is alone sidecar to the right of Rosenall in the gun. And they'll send Knotts in motion out of the backfield. Rosenall drops the pass. Wide open racer channel over the middle. Has the first down across the 40 to the 45 and powers his way down to the Tucker 47-yard line. Dragging tacklers for another five yards was racer channel. and A nice find there. He just dropped in that zone, Chris, and did a curl route. And- Bruce and all found him. 18 yards on the play to Channel. On the year, Racer, Ch- Racer Channel, 18 catches, 164 yards, and a score. And he was right, wide open under that zone. Again, they're only playing one single high safety. They'll split the backfield. This time they send two receivers to the right on first and 10. Rosenall fakes, play action pass. He pumps once. Now he's going to set his feet and fire a deep ball down the near sideline. Jumping in the air is Anderson. And he had his hands on it, as did the free safety, and it goes to the ground incomplete. Yeah, there again, uh, not a bad pass by Rosenall. And Maddox Anderson just lost the jump ball there. They, three, two two uh, defenders over there and Maddox Anderson, and uh, they all three went up. Thought Maddox Anderson was going to come up with a great catch, but – they knock it out the last minute. And that was Brent LeMay at free safety. He's wearing number 12 tonight instead of 25, so we'll make that change. They've had a couple number changes literally at the last second here tonight. Second and 10. Again, Southern shows blitz. They back out of it. Hand off and not much running room for Jared Real. He may get a yard to the 49, and that is it. Give him two officially. Third down and eight coming up. Yeah, not much going in that middle so far. A couple good runs, but not many. Almost like to see them challenge that corner there, try to challenge the outside, try to get the corner with one of these uh, quick running backs, maybe real or one of these receivers. But uh, third and long now for Tucker. Third down eight, ball at the 49 of Tucker, and the shotgun is Rosenall. In motion. Comes the receiver, and they drop the pass, a little shovel pass that was dropped, and that is a pass. Good job by J.J. Knott to jump on top of that loose football, but it's going to be a loss back to the 44. It's going to be fourth down. I'm not sure if he was trying to shovel it or he just didn't catch it. Uh, but nonetheless, a, a near turnover for Tucker. They save it. Now they'll have to punt it away and see if they can keep him from blocking it this time. Well, they brought Racer Channel in motion. That's a timing play on that little shovel pass as it goes to motion, and he wasn't quite there when the quarterback went to shovel, and it drops incomplete. Punt away, nice punt, and it's a muff down at the 20-yard line, but LeMay is able to get on top of that football right at that 21-yard line. That's where the Rams will take over. Flag on the play. First down and 10 with a flag down. That's at the Southern 38. Also a Southern player without their helmet on, so... Maybe there was a reason his helmet came off. Let's see what this flag is. Either way, it's going to be Southern football. And that last play there at third down play, Chris, like you said, looked to be a a jet sweep type motion, but uh, unable to get it. Get it secured and forces that fourth down and a punt. Yeah, it's the old Tavon Austin pitch play. There's a lot of timing involved in that, and the timing was not there. So it's hold against the Rams, so they'll move this back 10 yards. And the Rams will be backed up to start this possession as they put the football down all the way inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. That's where the Rams will take over first down and 10 at their own 12. So the penalty was on Southern. I was almost thinking maybe a face mask, but that wasn't the case. Southern pin deep. 2.28 to go in the first quarter. No score. Third possession for the Rams. Backs are split behind the quarterback. Strouser turns, hands it off. K1 Clark off the near side. Has running room across the 20 to the 25 and has the first down at the 26-yard line. Wesley Strottleman brings him down there. And if it wasn't for Strottleman, he may have had a lot more. That's a pick up a 12 on the play. Yeah, nice run. Or 14, I should say. Sorry, Dave. Nice run on the outside there by Southern. 
Kwan Clark, 31 yards now on seven carries. They've lined him up a couple different spots. We've also seen him at wing back as well. Now they're going to split the backs, offset to the right. They got two tight ends to the right as well. Different formation. They're going to run power, and it's Clark off the right side has the first down across the 40 of Southern and down to the Gar- Southern Garrett 42 and a half yard line. And they got something going here. The Southern uh, really got this defensive Tucker guessing with these different formations, and it's working as they've uh, got two big runs here on two plays on this drive. That time, they had two tight ends to the right, and they had the fullback leading the way, so they had an extra blocker or two, actually, on that side. And Clark. Oh, wing T look, it looked like. And Clark was not touched. He was about 12 yards downfield. First down 10, and again, it's Clark off the left side this time. Has running room and dives for the first down across midfield to the mount line, 49 and a half. He's going to be a little bit shy. The wing T look is uh, working as Tucker County. Racer Channel was the injured player down. Yeah, in pain, it looks like. It's a pickup on the play of eight yards. And we have an official's time down below. 55 yards now for Clark on nine carries. So here you go. This is the best-looking drive for both teams here tonight. So an injury down below, Dave. We have a minute 29 to go here. Quarter number one, no score between Tucker and Southern. The Rams, though, have some momentum. We hopefully, hopefully Racer Channel is going to be okay. and. I don't know. You never know about situations like this. Never speculate injuries. I'm hoping it's just the wind knocked out of him, but who knows. Well, he's moving uh, moving pretty good there. It almost seems like he's in some pain on the right side. Maybe it's a stinger, hopefully. And, and you get that stinger in your shoulder for the first time. It, it's, uh, it's not a good feeling in your arm, but it's like he's going to get up here and try to shake it off. Tom Gutshaw, the trainer, out there to assist him. Looking good there, walking back towards the sideline, and hopefully he can get back out there and play. He's a big part of this team. Yeah, neither team can afford injuries. Southern is dressing 16. Tucker has 18 available players, maybe 19, 18 or 19, give or take a few, but Tucker's had a couple has a couple injuries of their own. All right, it's going to be second down and two, ball at midfield. And this time they're going to sp- – Split the wing back way wide to the right. Unbalanced line right. And they're going to run off the right side. And big running room. And it's Spiker. Second carry of the night. Spiker gets across the 40 and down to the mount line, 37. Yeah, and these linebackers getting sucked in for Tucker County and getting caught in those holes. And this southern attack is working. It's like we talked about, Chris, in the pregame. This southern team is going to just line up and shove it down your throat. And that's what they're doing. They line Warnick because a receiver split out to the near side. That's the short side of the field. And they hand it off to Spiker off the left side. Spiker down to the 34 yard line. Yeah, awkward landing there from Spiker. Twisted around. I, I was looking for him to come up limping there, but he, he pops right back up. Looks like that's Reese Poling in there on the stop, Dave, the freshman. 82. Yep. Yeah. So the freshman getting some time, probably in there for Racer Channel. So spot that football up to 34. Spiker picks up three, second and seven. Backs are split, wing left. And they're going to hand it off. Here comes Clark, and he's going to be hit and dropped at the 30. Good tackle there by the mount lines. And there on the stop, Levi Pennington. You know, and this Tucker County team. All season, pretty much, in the games they've been in and in the games they've won, have, the defense has stepped up and bend but not break, and let's see if they can do that now. They've gave up some big plays at Southern's in Tucker territory. Let's see if we can get a stop here and turn everyone down. Should be the last play of the quarter, barring a penalty. Third down and three, ball at the 30, and they're going to have to spike her off the left side. He's going to be hit, breaks through one tackle, and he's going to die for the first down. He broke through the tackle of Don Mullinex, and then Wesley Strawman brings him down just across the sticks right at the 25-yard line. That'll be a Rams first down as we reach the end of our first quarter. No score here at the Class of 84 Alumni Stadium at R.H. Armstrong Memorial Field. Southern and Tucker, but the Rams are on the move. We'll come back of our second quarter right after this on TuckerCountySports.com. 
This TuckerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Patty Nichols, Attorney at Law, Jim's All Star, Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner, Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons, Robert Estates Incorporated, Performance Collision, Fargo Insurance Group, and by United Financial Service. And now back to more exciting mountain lion action on your home of Tucker County Sports, right here at TuckerCountySports.com. Back here at Tucker County, Parsons, R.H. Armstrong Memorial Field, scoreboard, pretty quiet. We started about five minutes early. And uh, looking at the scores, Allegheny, Maryland leads Kaiser, number 10 Kaiser in AA in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Chapmanville over Wayne, 7 to nothing. And we'll take a look at single-A scores here in just a second as I go through if we have anything. First quarter score, number five, Moorfield, 13. Number three, East Hardy, 12 in Baker. That's going to be a fun one to watch tonight. And St. Clairsville, Ohio, defeated number nine, winning Central, 35 to nothing. So that's a little bit of a mild upset. Pendleton County leads Pocahontas County, 7 nothing. That's a first quarter score as well. We'll look at more scores here in a bit on our game night Metro News scoreboard. First yeah, that, down 10 for the Rams, Dave. Yeah, that East Tardy Moorfield is going to be a dandy. Spiker off the right side, runs hard, down across the 20 and right at that 15-yard line where he's brought down. Should be close to a first down. If not, it may be enough. And may be on the spot of the ball. They're looking at it right now. Another good run by Southern. Getting some movement in the meat of that Tucker County defense. And I tell you, Chris, Tyler Collar, big loss for this Tucker County team. Oh, yeah. Not playing tonight. Yeah, big loss. Yeah, he's he does, he's done well inside there. They moved the chains. It is a first down. You know, speaking of Moorfield East Hardy, it's been a long time since Moorfield's beaten East Hardy. Yeah, they have two new transfers in at Moorfield, so uh, they're playing better. wonder why. Mm-hmm. Strouser rolls the pocket to the left. He'll carry. He's at the 10 to the 5. End zone touchdown. It's a hold, and they didn't call it. Yeah, on this near side. As being held there on the play, he looked like was Jacob Barrett. And into the end zone, off the bootleg action left, was the quarterback, Tyler Strouser, from 15 yards out. And the Rams lead 6 0. That's only their third touchdown of the season. Yeah, and we talked about this in the pregame. Uh, Southern's coming in here. They're, they're thinking they got a chance to win tonight, too. So they're playing well. And uh, one little tidbit on that hold, Chris, if you're. The defender there, you got to get your arms out and then try to act like you're trying to get away, and that'll sell that hold. If you just stand there, they're not going to go call it, and that's what happened. Good point. They'll go for two. They're in the eye, wing to the right. And they're going to hand it off. K1 Clark is hit. We got a flag on the play. They may call the hold now, but it's a little too late for that. <laughs> and the conversion fails, so if it is a hold, it won't matter. So Southern leads six to nothing here in the second quarter with 11:25 to go, and they haven't scored a touchdown since the Allegheny game, or they scored six in that one. That was their last game, 47 to six, a couple weeks ago. Then prior to that, week two in Maryland, they lost to Moorfield, 46 to six. And you look at that Moorfield game, Dave. It's kind of comparable because Moorfield beat us. 45-14, it beat Southern 46-6. to So you kind of look at that game, and you kind of knew coming into this, this is going to be probably a pretty good game tonight, and it has been so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I really thought uh, you know, Tucker would be motivated after that win against Pendleton. Maybe that week off is kind of, you know, maybe they had too much time to think about how how they beat Pendleton. But uh, it is what it is. It's a se- early second quarter, a lot of game left. You know, Tucker's got punched in the mouth here. You're going to have to respond, and, and uh, they're down 6 nothing now, so they're going to have to do something on offense, and then their defense is definitely going to have to play better. They've, uh, they've really not played terrible all year, except for a couple teams, a couple, couple games, the defense that is. And uh, they looked good early, but the last, uh, this last drive by Southern, man, they, they looked like they were on their heels the whole drive. Right now the line of scrimmage is being won by the Rams, and the running backs both uh... – Clark and Spiker have ran well behind their line. Okay, 11.25 to go. Tucker going to get it back. A chance to tie things up. As kicking things off for the Rams will be Gavin Warnick. Barrett and Adams back deep for 
the Mount Lions in their gold uniforms here tonight. Kick away, line drive kick down the middle of the field, and it's going to be Barrett at the 15-yard line across the 20, 25, 30, 35, and a good return out to the 40-yard line. And that is Jacob Barrett, the junior. So the Mount Lions, pretty good starting spot at their own 40. Yeah, good run there by Barrett. Tucker has ran the ball a little bit here in their first couple possessions. They just haven't been able to sustain their drives. See if they can do something here. We've seen a couple nice passes in that zone. Again, Southern playing one deep high safety with man underneath. Eight-man box. They're going to hand it off up the middle, and there is that big middle linebacker, Braden Sloan, to bring down the ball carrier. And up off the bottom of the pile is Jared Reel at the 41, gain of a yard, second and nine. And Sloan with his helmet coming off again. He's, that's the second time his helmet's come off, and he's had to come out again. That's good that he's on the sideline because he's been hard to block out there. Yeah, Tucker County just doesn't seem like – they're going to get things done in the middle here. But, uh, I know uh, Coach A.J. Rapp wants to keep trying that just to keep Southern honest, but uh, might have to start chucking the ball out here in the flat and see if Southern can play some defense in the secondary. It's a 4-4 look. Back to pass is Rosenall. Fires far side. It was in the hands of Barrett. the intended receiver, Jacob Barrett, but dropped incomplete. And that would have been a big gain there. He had his guy beat. He could have turned it up there and got a nice gain, but nonetheless, incomplete. It's going to be third down and long. Tough, tough, tough. Yeah, that was a big drop there. Yeah, he had single coverage on that side and Barrett on the backfield, but he had about three yards of separation. Just couldn't pull it in. Third down, nine. See if Maddox Anderson or maybe Racer Channel can get open here. Or Wesley Strauderman, we'll see. Two receivers to both sides, and the gun is Rosenall. Snap back. By Hayden Smith, not yet because offsides is Southern. That'll give us a free five yards as the Rams jump early. That is Tucker Savage, a junior defensive end on the left side. Yeah, good job there by Ethan Rosenall. Draw him off. Make this third down a little more manageable. So, Tucker County now with an option here to run or pass with it being third and three. The run game not not been there, though, so far, Chris. So, uh We'll see what happens, but got to put some hats on some hats to get some run going. Trips left, single receiver to the right. Rosenall in the gun, looks down to his wrist for the play call. Knots to his right in the shotgun. They fake the knots. Rosenall drops the pass, fires off his back foot, and it's too short, incomplete. Yep, again, backpedaling and throwing off his back foot, not able to get his arm into it, and it was short. And that's uh, one thing that, Ethan Rosenall has not been doing throughout the season. He's actually looked good there in the pocket, and he's had a couple of throws tonight, Chris, that just wasn't good. There's one of them. Fourth down four, J.J. Knotts on the punt. Coach Rapp wants to play field position here, and I can understand that. You just gave up a touchdown. Don't want to risk giving it back to him at your 45. It's about fourth and four. Snap back to Knotts. The punt away, it's a bad one. Off the side of his foot and out of bounds. And looks like this will be right around that 41. Yeah, it is right at the 41-yard line. So not a good punt at all. Only 15 yards on the punt, Dave. And that's where Southern will take over first and 10 at their own 41. Yeah, not a good punt. And, uh, I mean, you, you just look at this game so far, Chris, not, nothing going right for the Mount Lions. And, you know, coming in this game, they were probably favored to win this game, and that might be the worst thing that could have happened because it looks like these kids come in here thinking all they had to do was show up to get a win, and they better wake up here. They're going to get an L. Back to the wing T go the Rams, and Spiker gets the carry from left to right. He's going to be hit in the backfield, and there we go. We get a tackle behind the line of scrimmage on first down. That is key. Yeah, they had him way back there, and he still got some yardage there to get back. And uh, hats off to him. He kept fighting there. Tucker County's got to do a lot better job of wrapping up. We're there, Chris, almost every time. We're just not wrapping up. Our focus is off a little bit. Yeah, and the, like. these backs are running hard. So, with that being said, you're going to have to wrap up a little bit harder. You're right. Second down on a long 10 at their own 41. Wing to the left. 
Receiver out wide right. They're going to hand to K1 Clark from right to left. He's going to be hit and dropped. Good job by Don Mullinex there to mm-hmm. bring the runner down. And it's going to be a half a yard pickup. They'll give him the 42 officially, third and nine. And now you got to get this stop. You got to get this Rams offense off the field and force another punt to give your offense a chance to get one in the end zone before halftime. 9-12 to go, turning clock first half. 6 nothing. Southern. Garrett is the lead. Third down, 9. Warnick lines up his receiver wide left. They got the tight end left as well. That's Benninger. And they're going to hand it off, and the mount lines are there to bring the running back down for a loss. Don Mullinex leads the charge along with two other mount lines in there as well. I saw big number 79, Levi Pennington, to come up the bottom of the pile. Yeah, good job there by this Tucker County D now. Southern going to have to punt it away here. Fourth and 10 at their own 40, 41 yard line or so. And that's the best the defense has looked tonight. That's a two yard loss for kick for Clark. Fourth down 11, they'll punt. And their punter is Clark. And he boots it away. Line drive kick. Has some good distance to it. Anderson fields from his own 23. Far sideline to the 30 and squirts his way through. The 35 and down close to the 40. Give him the 38. Good job on return by Maddox, the sophomore, Anderson. And Maddox Anderson with a nice return. And Tucker County now back on offense here looking to get this ball game evened up or maybe even take the lead. They can punch one in here. It seems like ever since we had our pump block, the momentum has been on the side of Southern. And that last defensive stop, Tucker County got some energy. And maybe old Uncle Mo is on the side of the lines now. We'll see. Yeah, we're hoping uh, these mount lines get a little confidence, too. It looked like this looked a little bit, you know, kind of in slow motion. But uh, let's see if we can get our offense going. Split back shotgun for Rosenall. Southern shows blitz again from their inside linebacker. And here comes Shock. And here comes Jared Reel off the left side. Not much running room there. They're going to bring him down on the far side of the field. And they're on a stop for the Rams. It looked like it was Shock and LeMay. Give real yard, and that's it, second and nine. Nothing going. Now we got a stoppage of play here as referees stop it. We got somebody that has some equipment issue. Every football game I've covered this year, I've seen helmet malfunctions everywhere. <laughs> it's yeah. not just here. I think uh, one of the Tucker players lost their wristband, maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, nonetheless. While we have this little bit of time, Chris, I want to tell all the viewers this video brought to you by St. George Medical Clinic. They uh, are sponsoring the live video. We'll have basketball, volleyball, and football for you throughout those seasons. Third, check that second and nine. Eight-man box for the Rams. And they're going to roll left. Option pitch out to the left. That's Jared Reel. And there you go. They worked the perimeter Outside. this time. Yep. And there is running room to the 45. And out of bounds goes Reel. Yeah, nice little play there. Play design there from A.J. Rapp. Get the option out. Get him out to the outside. I think Reel has uh, got some advantages against this Southern team. They're big. I think he's quicker. If he can get that corner, he can do some work. And a good sign I'm seeing out there now. Racer Channel back out there on the field. So good job there by Tom Gutchall to get Racer Channel back out there. Third and three in the gun. And the dump out to Channel to the near side. Stops, moves forward. It's going to be tackled shy of the first down. He tried to stop and pivot should've, back left, and he was Should have kept dropped. going. Yeah, he should have kept going, try to beat him to the corner. Mm-hmm, I, think, I agree. I think he could have done it, but uh, it's uh, easy to say that from up here. <laughs> so it's a yard pass from Rosenall. To channel. So fourth down here in Tucker County. Oh, they're going to go for it. Yeah, right. fourth and about two. Why not? You had a 15 yard punt last time. Why not just go ahead and go for it here? Split back shotgun for Rosenall. Two receivers to the boundary right, single receiver wide left. They're going to run the football. It's real. Good stutter step move. First down and more in the Rams territory and down to the Southern Garrett 43 yard line. Nice little cut there by Jared Real. He not look. Looked that hole right back in, and he's seen that hole to the left, Chris. Made a nice cut and got extra yardage there on that. 12 yards for real. 12-yard run on a fourth and four play. 
Brent LeMay brings him down. I liked how he stuck his foot in the ground and just went north-south after he made his move. Yeah, great vision for a freshman, for sure. 6.30 to go in the first half. Clock is winding. First and 10 mount lines at the Southern 42. And they're going to fake the pass, or going to fake the handoff. Dropping the pass as Rose Nolly steps up. Fires the ball far side. It's caught. Maddox Anderson first down at the 20. Inside the 20. Fumbles the football. It's in the field of play. And who has it? Tucker, I think Tucker got back on top yeah, of it. Tucker jumped back Ooh. on it. And we got lucky there as Maddox Anderson made the cut to go up the field and lost the ball. And mindful of him to get right back on it and cover it up. 23 yards on the play to Anderson. What a catch by Anderson. Looked like it was going to be picked off as it was late. And the Southern defender just couldn't get it. Timeout, Southern. 6-13 to go first half. Tucker on the move. It's the Rams 6. The Mount Lions nothing. We'll come back after this quick timeout on TuckerCountySports.com. This TuckerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Mr. Pizza of Parsons, Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, Kidwell Auto Parts, Bob Gutshaw, Cortland Acres, Mountain Valley Bank, Sirianni's Cafe, and by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting mountain line action on your home of Tucker County Sports, TuckerCountySports.com. East Tardy has taken the lead on Moorefield in the second quarter in Baker, 18-13. Williamstown up over number 14, Tyler Consolidated, second quarter, 7-0. And that's a couple scores there. Page County, Virginia leads Petersburg, 6-0. Pendleton still has that 7-0 lead over Pocahontas County. More scores in a smidgen. It's a first down. Call it 10 at the Southern 21-yard line. 6-13 left in this second quarter. Rosenall. Barking this cadence. Drops the pass. Back pedals, throws, far side tipped and almost intercepted. It's incomplete. LeMay over there in coverage. It's second down. Yeah, and Chris, <laughs> Ethan Rosenau looks more antsy tonight than I've seen him in a while. He's His feet are pretty happy. And I uh, don't know if that's just because he had a week off or what, but uh, he's uh, – Feeling that pressure a little too early and backpedaling, I think, a little too much. But maybe those, I'm wrong. Those inside linebackers are getting penetration up in his face. Again, Rosenall back to pass. Here comes LeMay on the blitz. Off the left side, they're going to bring him down. They're going to sack him. And on the play, on the sack for Southern, it's going to be, as I turn my sheet over, Brandon Bryson Sloan, Branson Sloan, excuse me, the brother of Brayton Sloan. So it's going to drop. Rosenall back to the 20, back at 30 yard line. Loss of about what? Nine on the play? Yeah, yeah loss of nine. Almost looked like it was going to be a screen, but if it's a screen, Chris, he should have got rid of that ball way sooner. And uh, Ethan Rosenall takes that sack there. Third and 19. Rosenall to pass this time. He has time. Fires over the middle. Incomplete. Spiker deflected the pass away at the 10 yard line. Yeah, late. That was late across the middle. and. Unfortunate, unfortunate it wasn't intercepted. I think that was Racer Channel over there on the intended receiver. Wow. Nope, Jacob Barrett was the intended receiver. It was 24, not 34. So it's going to be fourth and 19, and you got no choice here but to go for it. That time he had time to set his feet, which was nice, but the coverage was there. Yeah, it was. And like you say, you got to throw it just a hair sooner and uh, – you might have had a chance. Six-man box. Make that a seven-man box for the Rams. They got a second safety out there. Long pass near side. It's caught by Racer Channel inside the five. He's going to take it in the end zone for the Tucker County touchdown. And we do have a flag down in the middle of the field, I believe, unless that's nope, a, a leaf. leaf. That's it's a leaf. leaf. I'll take it. Touchdown, Racer Channel from the quarterback, Ethan Rosenall, 30-yard. Touchdown in the mount lines and tied at six on fourth and 19. Yeah, good job by Ethan Rosenall hanging in there, threw a great pass out there in the flat, and that's a tough pass. And uh, Racer Channel hauled it in and did the rest. A nice cut by Racer up 
to the left side, up the middle to get the touchdown. Tucker will go for two to take the lead. It's a high snap over J.J. Knotts' head. He's going to pick it up. He's going to run to the far side of the field, which is the left. He's in trouble. He's going to fire the ball down the field. It's caught and dropped by Southern. Incomplete conversion. Fails. We're tied still at six. The old high snap. (laughs) And J.J. Knotts is like, hey, man, I'm not a quarterback. I'm not used to this. He did a great job. Yeah, he did. I thought he was going to jump on it, which probably would have been the smart thing to do because if Southern scoops it there, they can score two points on that conversion. So, uh, But it falls incomplete to tie this thing at six. Fourth and 19, what do you got? <laughs> Not a lot you can do, but credit the offensive line for giving Rosen all the time to throw that ball down the field. And Southern lightened the box up a little bit. They went to a second safety. They didn't bring pressure. And not many teams are going to bring pressure when it's fourth and 19. And Racer Channel was able to get open that little post corner out near side. He made the catch, did the rest himself for the 30-yard touchdown to tie this up at six apiece. I have talked about Racer Channel and improvement he's made since last year. The young man's turned into a player. Yeah, and he, he got injured, got back in there, and made an impact on that drive. And uh, there was – there it was again. Great catch, great run, touchdown. Tie this thing up. And if you're Southern, you're like, man, it's 0 and 5. We've given up a ton of points this year. I mean, look at the points they've allowed to Mount Ridge, Maryland, who is really good. 84, 69 to Fort Hill. <laughs> and Fort Hill, we know how good they are. 47 to Allegheny, 46 to Moorfield. And here you go. You have Tucker down, a chance to get the ball back, and look what happens. 84 points, man. Yeah, the Mountain Ridge. That's the last time you've seen a team give up 84 points. Uh, Somebody must be mad at somebody on that deal. Yep. But nonetheless, uh, Southern probably had this one circled, to be honest with you. I I didn't say that earlier, but, you know, Tucker County, you know, not having the best season, but a little bit of momentum here and there. And Southern probably thought, well, this is our chance to get a win. But now Tucker County's got to keep this momentum, build on it, and uh, go forward here with that momentum. K1 Clark and Austin Spiker deep for the Rams. Rosen all to kick it off. He does squib it down the field. It's Spiker at the 20. To the middle of the field, 25 30. 35 and near the 40 before he's dropped there to the ground by Jared Reel on special teams. Also, Ethan Rosen all there helping make the tackle. That's one thing you're not seeing from this Tucker County team. Ethan Rosenall not playing defense because of his importance at quarterback. A.J. Rapp electing not to play him on defense just because he knows he needs him on offense. and He'd be a good uh, asset to this defense also. Joseph Ratchford checks into the game defensively for the first time. The sophomore defensive or linebacker, I should say. And right up the middle for the first down and more is up off the bottom of the pile. That's K1 Clark. I believe, check that, I'm wrong. It's the other one, Austin Spiker. Touchdown saving tackle there by J.J. Nance. So ball at the Tucker 47. Spiker picks up 14 big ones. That's where uh, Dom Monex playing linebacker can't get can't get sucked in there. He, he got in too deep, and he got himself out of position, and he's out of the play. The key to stopping this Rams offense is to do it on first down. Up the middle and running into his own man. It's K1 Clark. He fumbles the football. It's loose. There's Tucker a dog pile, it. and I think Tucker has it. We'll see. Well, that's a huge turnover. If it is, it is Mount Lion football. It's Clark fumbled the football. Good job by Tucker County there to strip that ball away. Wow. And, and, and pounce on that ball to give them the ball back. Actually, that was Spiker, not Clark. Again, my apologies. Austin Spiker, the ball carrier, who fumbled the football after a three-yard pickup. Tucker gets it back. First turnover of the night on the Rams. We'll take it. First and 10 Tucker at their own 44-yard line. 4.36 left in this second quarter. It would be nice to get one on the board again here. Two receivers to both sides. They'll send the slot receiver left in motion to the right. That's real. And they're going to hand it off, and it's Knotts, and he'll get maybe a yard, and that is it. The interior front of Southern leading the way is their big inside linebacker, Braden Sloan, the junior. Called his name multiple times tonight. Second down and nine coming up. 
it just just not much going there for Tucker. They've only got a couple decent runs in the inside there. I know why they're doing it. It's true. Still got to test it out. You still got to make Southern, you know, play honest here. But uh, yeah, Tucker County offensive line got to do a better job there pushing. Second down nine for the Lions. In the gun, Rosenall back to pass, sets up a wide receiver, screens caught by Wesley Strauderman. First down and more. Strauderman out of bounds at the southern 44-yard line. Yeah, Flag job. down. Looks like we may have a either a hold or a man downfield. Let's see. Because that pass was across the line of scrimmage. So let's see what the referee signals here. Holding is the call against Tucker. It's coming back. Yeah, they'll accept the penalty, which will make it about a second down and 12 or 13 based on where the penalty is. Well, that's going to be officially a six-yard pass. and move it back from there. Yeah. And put the ball down. Actually, that's a bigger penalty than what I thought. But it's going to be about a second down and 13, 14 yards. Yeah, we'll call it uh, 13. Second and 13, Tucker at their own 41. Could have been worse. <laughs> penalty occurred down the field, which helped. Tucker. Facing an eight-man box, a 4-4 front for the Rams. Those two inside linebackers have been hard tonight. Back to passes Rosenall again, off his back foot, throws, caught, oh. drop a channel. He had his hand up, mm. and he caught one earlier this season. A road on the road, he hit one like that, and it dropped right down into his lap, but uh, that one that did not go that way. Might see some adjustments in the second half. Maybe get Rosenall rolling to his right on some of those routes to go towards the right side of the field to give him a little bit of time to A, set his feet, and then B, throw. Because those two inside linebackers, Noah Wilt and Braden Sloan, have been deadly tonight because that front four of Southern is doing a good job of tying up those offensive linemen to let those backers run free. Timeout, 3.39 to go first half. Tucker faces a third and 13. At their own 41-yard line, the game tied at six. We'll pause after these quick messages. This TuckerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. Jim's all-star. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. Robert Estates Incorporated. Performance Collision. Fargo Insurance Group, and by United Financial Service. And now back to more exciting mountain lion action on your home of Tucker County Sports, right here at TuckerCountySports.com. Still 18-13, East Hardy leads Tucker. Pocahontas is on the board in Dunmore, <laughs> or East Hardy leads Moorefield, I should say. Pendleton County is on the board. They lead Pocahontas in Dunmore 7-6. to six. That's in the second period as well. And got a couple late postponements today. One of them was Grafton and Phillip Barber. Phillip Barber couldn't play because of COVID. Hmm. University 14, Buckhand up sure nothing first quarter. That's only going to get uglier from there on out. More scores in a bit. Third down, 13. Rosenau on the gun. Two receivers to both sides. And they'll fake the handoff. Good blitz pick up by Knotts. Rosenall then rolls left. He's hit and drop. Fumbled the football. Rams may have it. Yeah, that's where Rosenall's going to get that ball out sooner. And when that blitz came, he's got to step up all, a little further or take off running. And he uh, does not, gets hit from behind. Ball comes out, and Southern gets the, re, gets the uh, fumble recovery. It looked like Garrett Rounds was one of the ones in there on the stop, and they do get it back. Southern does off the fumble. Tucker turns it over. Now the Rams with some momentum. They took over deep in Mountain Lions territory at the 38-yard line. They'll go to the eye formation, will the Rams. And they'll give it to the big fullback, Sloan. He's hit and dropped by Dom and Ake Molinex, the junior. Six foot. 250 and a junior. And they're going to lose. Well, they'll give him the line, the scrimmage. Second and 10. So Southern is stuck to their wing tee. Uh, seen some eye formation, but that's about it. 
Back in the wing, and they're going to hand it off to Spiker, and he has room across the 30, fumbles the football. It's loose. It's still loose on the field. J.J. Knotts has it at the Southern 25-yard line. Good hit there by Tucker, knocking that ball out. And Tucker County recovers. We'll get that number here in just a second. Who J. knocked J. that out? I don't know who knocked it out, but credit J.J. Knotts for diving on top of that football. The old nose for the pigskin for J.J. Knotts. That's the second fumble by Spiker in this quarter. So Tucker, boy, what a defensive stop that was. They get it back with 2.50 to go in the first half at their own 16. You may not like your starting spot, but you got it back because you stopped then because they were starting their drive at your 39. And that hit was by Racer Channel. <laughs> go figure. It's knock been his it half. out. Yeah, it's been his half, too. Just seen the replay. Off the left side and not much running room. We have another fumble. I think he was down. I thought he was down too. No signal yet by the referee. Southern has the football, and it looks like they're going to stick with the call in the field, which is what? Well, they're, they're not saying Southern's ball yet. I thought he was definitely down. Can do now. They give it to Southern. Wow. Wow. I think that was Jared Real fumbled the ball, but I could be mistaken. But Dal Mullinex is sticking his arms out like he was down. What are you doing? So wow. the Rams get it right back as teams exchange turnovers. Blow this up on this replay. I gotta see this one again. First and ten at the 16 for Southern, and off the left side and down inside the 10 to the eight yard line with another flag down is Spiker. Yeah, he was definitely down, Chris. Yep. There you Ball go. come out when he hit the ground. I think the officials just guessed, to be honest with you. Now that's the late flag for holding against the Rams. So they'll bring this back, repeat the down. The flag resting at the 11-yard line. Actually, it was, let's see where the flag was at. We'll mark it back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. <coughs> I'll put the football down at the 24-yard line. So give him two yards. It'll be first and 18. Man, what a crazy game this is. First down 18 for the Rams at the Mount Lines 24. And they're going to hand it off to Spiker. He slips and falls on his keister. <laughs> and they'll drop him shy of the 25 back to the 26-yard line. That's a loss of two more. Yes, after these last string of fumbles... <laughs> Now all you're saying is hold on to that football. We did get a little bit of light rain this afternoon. The playing surface was a little slick. I wouldn't say wet. Just well, kind of a little slick on top of it. And as night has fallen, humid. And it's <laughs> very humid, yes. It was very humid before the night fell. And, and I'm sure the dew is pretty thick on the field. So you got that going on. But just a lack of concentration for the most part. Second down coming up in 20 for the Rams at the Tucker 26-yard line. They call timeout. Let's take a look at our scoreboard. Let's take a look at some AAA scores. Number one, Martinsburg pounding Spring Mills 28-9 in the second quarter. I mentioned the University of Buchanan score. Second quarter, number nine, George Washington. Number seven, Cabell Midland and Ona tied at seven apiece. Last night, John Marshall beat Brooke 41-6. That kind of surprised me a little bit. Second quarter, Morgantown 14, Parkersburg South, number 13 in AAA this week, who hasn't played in two weeks. They have seven points, a 14-7 Morgantown in the second period. And Motown, AA scoreboard, number two, Polka, number three, Logan. It's number two, Polka leading Logan, seven to six in the second period as well. Um, more scores as we look down. North Marion, 27, Lewis County, nothing in the second quarter. No surprise there. Pendleton County now only up one. Pocahontas has scored. 7 6 right at Dunmore. Liberty Harrison leads East Fairmont 13 7, second quarter, and Fairmont Senior leads Robert Seabird 14 7, second quarter. Okay, we'll give you a full scoreboard rundown at the half. Second and 20 for the Rams. They're going to hand it off. Here comes Spiker. He eludes 1, 2 to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and all the way down inside the 10 he goes. And he's shy of the first down, but he's going to be shy by about two yards. Long 18 yard run. For Austin Spiker. And a little reverse play by Southern and caught Tucker off guard. The D ends overran it and got beat. And Southern 
in business here. Third down and four, but definitely in four down territory. Spiker has 85 yards on 11 carries. There's another run and on it's the right. Spiker again, flagged down behind the play. <laughs> yeah, that was a, about a 20-yard throw by the official on the far side. That was impressive. So it was third down and four. He stopped shy Holding. of the first down. It's a hold against Southern. You have to take this. This is going to move it back 10 yards. If you take the result of the play, it's going to be fourth and four. So you have a decision to make. Right, you can take the penalty. You take the penalty. I agree. Because it's going to bring up third down and about 14. That fourth down play would have been about fourth and a yard. Yeah, he and stopped him shy of that. He was yeah. about fourth and four. Yeah. But I think you're right. Take the penalty. Move him back to the, oh, right about that 20, make it to 19-yard line. Brings up a third down and 12. Third down and, oh, I don't know, 13 it looks like. Now you got to stop them on two more downs. Backs are offset behind the quarterback. He drops the snap from center, picks it up, does Strouser. He's hit and dropped. A good job there on that penalty. And uh, Tucker's going to call, nope, Southern's going to call a timeout here to stop the clock so they can run their fourth down play. So no gain on that center quarterback. Exchange now. The center is Jeff Miller. He is not the normal starter. Their normal starter has been out. So Miller and Strouser are their center quarterback combo here. So Southern calls a timeout. Brings up a third down and third down and thirteen makes it now fourth and thirteen. Looks like. Well, I mean it's simple. You got fifty three seconds to go in the half. You're thinking one thing only, stopping them on fourth down. They're offset. Yeah, I mean you got to stop them and, you, and let this clock run out. You get the ball to start the second half. So you definitely don't want to give up a touchdown here or, or a first down. So, uh, you know, Southern's got what? Two more timeouts? No, they're out of timeouts. So, uh, if you even if you give up a first down here, you know, you, you, Southern's going to have to move quickly because, you know, they're, they don't have any timeouts. Only 50-some, 50 53 seconds left in this game. But – First and foremost here, you got to get the ball back, stop them here. Fourth down and 13. They've thrown only once. The other time was a bootleg rollout by the quarterback who ran it in. And he's going to do it again. He's going to run off the left side. He's hit, stays on his feet. Second time, still stays on his feet as he breaks through the tackle of knots, but Tucker's going to bring him down. Sure. Wesley Strauderman and Jacob Barrett bring him down shy of the 10-yard line, and it's short, as Dave said, Tucker takes over. First and 10 from their 12. Yeah, that's a good stand by Tucker D. Now, <laughs> he's got to hold on to this football and get in the locker room. I, I'd almost down it here, Chris. <laughs> yeah, because the first drive of the second half is so important. We'll talk about that at halftime. I'll explain why in this 6-6 game. But what you don't want to do here, Dave, with 44 seconds to go is turn the ball over. So, yes. I think I'm with you down this, and they do show victory formation. And Southern don't have a timeout, so they can't stop it. Rosenall takes a knee, and that's how this half will come to a close. Yeah, they don't have to run another play. It's under 32. They just started the play clock, and now all you do is just run into the locker room and regroup. They don't have to take another snap. Nope. Well, it's been an interesting first half. It's been a half dominated by Southern when you look at the stats. But they've only finished once. Tucker, they were able to finish on a fourth and 19 play. However, Tucker gets the ball to start the second half, and we'll talk about why that is so important when we come back. Halftime here from R.H. Armstrong Memorial Field in Parsons, the Class of 84 Alumni Stadium, Southern Garrett, Maryland 6, Tucker County 6. Halftime show next, TuckerCountySports.com. This Tucker County Sports Talk.com broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. Proud to support Tucker County Sports. Jim's All-Star, hot food, cold beverages, and gas. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Wishing all of Tucker County High School Mountain Lion athletes a safe and successful season. 
Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. Performance Collision with locations in Parsons and Morgantown. Robert Estates Incorporated, serving all of your general contracting needs. Fargo Insurance Group, Tucker County's nationwide insurance agent. United Financial Service, Auto Life Commercial Insurance and Annuities. This Tucker County Sports.com broadcast is also being brought to you by Mr. Pizza of Parsons. Home of the Mr. Big. More than just pizza. Try our subs, salads, and wings. Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, your local rustic fence provider. Kidwell Auto Parts, with locations in Parsons and Thomas. Bob Gutshaw, your local State Farm insurance agent. Cortland Acres, choose us for your long-term care, rehab, and therapy needs. Mountain Valley Bank, locations in Parsons, Elkins, and Mill Creek. Sirianni's Cafe, with locations in Davis and Canaan Valley. And by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting Tucker County High School action. Right here on your home of the mountain lines. TuckerCountySports.com I love that. Home of the Mr. Big, Mr. Pizza. <laughs> yep. I uh, want to thank those fine sponsors for uh, helping out with the TuckerCountySports.com uh, broadcast. And uh, I want to thank St. George Medical Clinic also for uh, sponsoring the live video camera that uh, was installed here at the football field and at the high school gym. We'll have some, you know, some of you may have already been watching some volleyball. We'll have uh, high school basketball for you once that season gets underway uh, from the gym. And uh, we'll have the rest of the remaining home games for Tucker County, and that'll be two more, one on uh, October the 29th here against Petersburg and here also on November 5th against South Harrison. Both of those games will be broadcast on YouTube live with audio by TuckerCountySports.com. And Chris, uh, Tucker finally woke up, got this thing tied up, and uh, now we got a ball game. Yeah, fourth and 19 past the Racer Channel is huge because Southern really dominated a lot of scrimmage in the first half. They controlled time of possession as well. Uh, they had more first downs than we did. They had more rushing yards. In fact, look at the first half totals. Southern had 173 yards rushing, Tucker 33. And the problem there is, is Tucker's had a hard time controlling the middle of the line of scrimmage. Southern's front four is strong and physical. They're holding up the blockers and keeping those linebackers, Scott free and clean, able to make those stops. And Sloan and Noah Wilt have been forces from that linebacker position in the first half. But quarterback Ethan Rosenall has been able to pass the football. He's thrown for 86 yards in the first half. And Southern, no yards passing at all. So there you go, first half stats in favor of the Rams, but the score is tied. Both teams have turned the football over twice. Now, I made a point a while ago why this opening possession is so key for Tucker. Number one, get the ball to start second half, obviously. Number two, you want to control some clock. You want to go down and score. So I think against a team against Southern, you want to play from ahead. You want to give Southern that doubt. You want to make them kind of play catch up. Southern is an offense that wants to play from in front. I think Tucker County can control the line of scrimmage in the second half to start things out and score. It's going to help them because if they don't, Southern's going to get the fall football back. I'm just going to start wearing on you because I'm afraid with the time of possession in the first half favoring the Rams, it's going to tire out Tucker's defense a little bit in the second half if Tucker doesn't maintain more possession of the football. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, you know, uh, it, it took a while, it seemed like, for Tucker to wake up, and they finally did. And now let's see if they can build on that momentum, especially offensively. Now, that last offensive possession for Tucker was tough. I mean, he got a sack and uh, did move the ball very – I mean, moved the ball a little bit but couldn't convert. And, uh, you know, then they had the turnover. So, you know, Tucker County's got to regroup here, got to get back to what uh, got them that nice drive. I mean, obviously passing the ball has been successful. So that's where Tucker County's got to get – get their mindset right coming out here in the second half. They cannot come out here like they did to start this game and let Southern control things. And, and they got to keep, they got to keep playing good on defense. Defensively, they had that one drive where they kind of were on their heels. But other than that, they play well on defense. Little late night, middle school night, 
both Little League cheerleaders and football. The Pee Wees and the Midgets out there uh, being recognized, which I think is awesome. Also, the middle school football team recognized, the Little League cheerleaders out there. I think it's important to do that here at this field on a Friday night because it gives a chance for these cheerleaders and football players a sense of what Friday night football is all about. Yeah, it definitely is, and uh, a good job there by all involved to get that done. And, uh, you know, everybody everybody watching at home uh, was able to watch that. Uh, you were not able to maybe hear everyone's name, but at the same time able to see uh, your your uh, grandson or kid out there being recognized under these Friday night lights is always a good thing. And, and like you said, gives them a sense of Friday night lights, gives them uh, some a little bit of excitement, maybe look forward to them actually playing high school football one day. Speaking of the middle school, Tucker Valley Middle, 4-1 and one now as they beat Petersburg on the road last night, 34-6. to six. Big win for the Wildcats. Big win for the Wildcats, still undefeated. No, actually one loss in PVO play. Uh, that Pendleton County game that got uh, kind of stopped because of weather is looming large here. They'll uh, work them details out later, but uh, uh, Pendleton not not – not willing to make that up as they stopped that game in the first quarter. And uh, Pendleton was up 6 nothing, but Tucker was at the six-yard line looking to tie it up there in the first, and they stopped it because the weather did not resume it. And looks like Pendleton's not going to reschedule. So now Tucker with the one loss to Moorefield, and I'm not sure where it's going to fall with Pendleton, but uh, Pendleton may win the tiebreaker if that's the case. Pendleton will go to PVL instead of Tucker Valley. What that's, is that that's, tiebreaker? That's, that's the question. That's all yet to be worked out here. Yeah. We'll find out about that maybe this week. But uh, Tucker has one more game left on their schedule, I believe, and that's Tucker Valley or uh, Taggart's Valley. And you know, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, they've had a great year. One loss, and it was a last-second loss to Moorefield. Moorefield scored with 16 seconds left in that ball game to take the lead on Tucker Valley, and uh, Tucker Valley had the lead, and that's the only thing keeping them from an undefeated season right now. We don't know what Pendleton County's schedule win, winning loss record is because that game that was 6 nothing Pendleton in the first quarter is thrown out. Right. You can't count that. It doesn't matter if Pendleton's ahead or not. I know some people on that side want to count that. You can't do that. It's like counting a baseball score. It gets rained out in the third inning, and it's 2 nothing. It's, it's not official. Yeah, the only the only tiebreaker that, that I would, and like I say, I'm speculating here, is Pendleton has played more conference games than Tucker Valley. Uh, Tucker Valley plays some out-of-conference games, one being Taggart's Valley, one being uh, South Harrison, who they played here that you helped me call. So uh, Tucker Valley does play some non-conference games other than the PVL. So, uh, you there know, you go. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. I really think they need to make Pendleton County play that game next week instead of Tucker Valley playing Tigers Valley. They need to play Pendleton County because of conference reasons. But you know, if not, why, why couldn't Pendleton play on a Saturday? That's kind of my deal. But uh, nonetheless, that's the details there with the middle school. Uh the, uh, the cross-country team uh, doing well. Katie uh, Hicks uh, you know, with a couple wins. Uh, she won the Tucker County Invitational uh, a couple weeks ago, won the PVCs last week or this, this week, and uh, uh, looking good for regionals coming up and then also maybe a state berth for uh, Tucker County uh, tr- uh, cross-country team and Katie Hicks who's, and Aaron Chambers who – Finished fourth in that uh, PVC race. So good things happening there in cross country and uh, good things happening across the Tucker County community. And, uh, you know, just a little bit of update. If you, if you ever get wondering about what's going on, TuckerCountySports.com, that's where you need to go. Uh, up-to-date news and information right there on the homepage. Also, the links to these video broadcasts right there on the left of the homepage, the gym link and the football field link. Uh, also, they're doing Little League football here also. When, when the Little League plays here at home, they're live streaming those games. And then we've been doing the middle school games also here on the uh, on the broadcast of Tucker County Sports here on YouTube Live. We'll come back. More of our halftime show. We'll take a look at the scoreboard on our Metro News game night scoreboard. Scores across the state of West Virginia in Class AAA, AA, and Single A. 
Right after this, our score to break. Southern Garrett, Maryland 6, Tucker County 6, TuckerCountySports.com. This Tucker County Sports Talk.com broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. Proud to support Tucker County Sports. Jim's All-Star, hot food, cold beverages, and gas. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Wishing all of Tucker County High School Mount Lion athletes a safe and successful season. Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. Performance Collision with locations in Parsons and Morgantown. Robert Estates Incorporated, serving all of your general contracting needs. Fargo Insurance Group, Tucker County's nationwide insurance agent. United Financial Service, Auto Life Commercial Insurance and Annuities. This Tucker County Sports.com broadcast is also being brought to you by Mr. Pizza of Parsons. Home of the Mr. Big. More than just pizza. Try our subs, salads, and wings. Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, your local rustic fence provider. Kidwell Auto Parts, with locations in Parsons and Thomas. Bob Gutshaw, your local State Farm insurance agent. Cortland Acres, choose us for your long-term care, rehab, and therapy needs. Mountain Valley Bank, locations in Parsons, Elkins, and Mill Creek. Sirianni's Cafe, with locations in Davis and Canaan Valley. And by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting Tucker County High School action, right here on your home of the mountain lines, Tucker County Sports. Dot com. Back here, halftime, R.H. Armstrong Memorial Field in Parsons at the Class of 84 Alumni Stadium. 6-6 six, six is a score to break Southern Garrett, Maryland, and Tucker. And we'll take a look at the second half here in just a moment. But it's now time to take a look at the Mentor News scoreboard. And we'll start in Class AAA, where number one Huntington is leading St. Albans in the second quarter, 21 to nothing. Second quarter, number one, Martinsburg pounding number 16, Spring Mills, 34 to 9. Second quarter, likewise, another pounding taking place. Number four, University, 28, Buckcan up shirt, nothing. Number five, Princeton leads Hedgesville at the half, 14 to 7. Uh, Princeton is the opponent for Bridgeport next week, a game I will be at at Honeycutt's Field in Princeton. Metro News Class AAA Game of the Week at the half. Number 7, Cabell Midland 14. Number 9, George Washington 7. Keep a close eye on that one. Second quarter, number 8, South Charleston Riverside are scoreless. A little bit of a surprise there. Riverside is 1-5. and five. Charles, South Charleston is 5-1. and one. Second quarter score, number 9, Spring Valley leads Capital at Lately Field 21 to nothing. A final from last night, number 15, John Marshall beat number 11, Brooke 41-6. A little surprised by that score. Number 12, Greenbrier East and Ripley tied at 7. That is the second quarter score. Up in Morgantown, second quarter, the Mohegans 21. The number 13 ranked Parkersburg South Patriots 7. A little surprise there. Musselman 14, Wheeling Park 7 at the half in Inwood. That's a little bit of a surprise to say the least. Musselman is 2-4, and four, a very young team. Wheeling Park 2-2 two and two on the season. How about this score? At the half, Preston and Washington tied at nothing. At the end of the first quarter last week, Bridgeport was leading Preston 48 to nothing. <laughs> so a much improved Preston night team in the second or in the uh, first half of that game tonight against Washington. We'll switch to double A. Number two, Polka leads number 13, Logan, 7 to 6 at the half, and a good one there. Number three, Independence leads Man out of single A, 54 to 7 at the half. Point Pleasant gets a forfeit win over Wyoming East. A postponement that came later this week. Number five, Nicholas County at West Five. That's postponed. And Lincoln got the forfeit win over Elkins. Some more scores at the half. Number eight, North Marion leads Lewis County 34 to nothing. No surprise there. Halftime in Cumberland, Allegheny of Maryland 14. Number 10, Kaiser 7. A good one there. Halftime as well at East West Stadium in Fairmont. The Polar Bears 14 and the number 10 rated R. Robert C. Bird, the Flying Eagles 7. We knew that would be a good one. Halftime in Clarksburg, Liberty Harrison 20, number 12 East Fairmont 7. 
little bit of a surprise there. The Bees are 4-2. The Mountaineers are 3-3. Three three. Phillip Arbor, their game against Grafton was postponed due to COVID on the Colts' side of things. That very well could be a forfeit win for Grafton unless they can reschedule at a later date. Also, other scores in Double A. Berkeley Springs leads Triple A Hampshire 21-6 in the second quarter. Chapmanville 33, Wayne 8. That's a second period score as well. Mango Central 25, Shady Springs 6 at the half. And let's take a look at class single A scores now. Number one, Dotbridge County leads Ravenswood in the first quarter 7-0. At the half, Cameron, the Dragons, number two in single A this week, lead number 12, Clay Battelle, 30-0 at the break. Halftime in Baker, number three, East Hardy, 18. Number five, Moorfield, 13 in the Hardy Bowl. More scores in single A. Number five, Ritchie County, pounding Webster, 34-0 in the first quarter. Number five, Williamstown, 28. Number 14, Ray Tyler Consolidated, 6. That's a halftime score. Also in single A, Trinity, 45. Hancock, Maryland, nothing at the half. More scores in single A. Page County, Virginia, 38. Petersburg, 6. Pocahontas County, 12. Pendleton County, 7 at the half. Greenbrier West, 36. Richwood, 8. That's the second quarter score. St. Mary's, 14. Magnolia, nothing in the second quarter. Big rivalry game there. And that is all the scores on our Metro News Game Night Scoreboard. Dave joins us back, and Dave, I was letting the people know. Last week I did the Preston-Bridgeport game. It was 48-0 Bridgeport at the end of the first quarter, and they ended up winning that game 72-0. Preston had a total of minus 24 yards total offense for the game. Tonight they're playing AAA Washington. At the half in Kingwood, no score. Wow. Talk about a change. Yeah, that is a big change, and. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you I know you went over it, but Pocahontas County now have went ahead of Pendleton County at the half. Yeah. Twelve to seven. Also got an update uh from uh middle school football, Tucker Valley Middle School football. They will play Capem Bridge for a chance to play for the PVL championship. And that ta- date and time is yet to be determined, but uh they're gonna play that extra game that will tie them, I guess, with the amount of games Pendleton's played probably in the conference. So they can be, get that win against Cape and Bridge, and that will actually probably let, allow them to pass Pendleton County and uh, a chance to play for the PVL championship. So that's good news. That news coming from Adam Freeman uh, posted that uh, today uh, sometime, and I just got that update. But that's good news for Tucker Valley because, you know, they, they actually may get a chance to play for the PVL championship, which they deserve. They deserve that rematch with Moorfield, whether it be here or Moorfield. That, that, that game has to happen. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Moorfield scored with 16 seconds left to beat them. You know, that's uh, on the Tucker Valley players' mind, and uh, that would be another dandy of a game if it, if played again. And I'm assuming the Tigers Valley game is off next week, and it'll replace by Cape and Bridge. Yeah, not sure of uh, the details I mean, yet. Well, Tigers Valley we'll, may not even have enough players to play, to be yeah, honest we'll, with you. Yeah, we'll let you know when that uh, – when that does come, that news does come, but uh, not sure the details there. And we will definitely have that for you announced on TuckerCountySports.com whenever they make that decision. If you look at the schedule for Tucker Valley, though, they have one more game left, and uh, that is on the 20th, which is this, this uh, Wednesday, and that is Taggart's Valley. And then the PVL is the following week. So, uh, you know, they're going to have to play that game either, either uh, you know, Wednesday or sometime next week. And if they play Tigers Valley, it may, it may be a Saturday or something like that. But nonetheless, uh, that news coming from Tucker Valley that uh, they will play another conference game. And uh, we'll let you know when, that, when they make that decision when that's going to be. Well, we'll find out. Dave will let you know, TuckerCountySports.com, and uh, maybe if I'm free, if I don't have a – I know i got Bridgeport Middle in the semis of the North Central 7 next Wednesday as they host Morgantown. So if it's on a Thursday, maybe if it's here, maybe we'll be here and do it. Yeah, and if it's here, we'll uh, – and if it's not, then we'll uh, we'll definitely – Root them on the victory. Yeah, try to keep you updated if, if we're not busy doing a volleyball game or something that night. But uh, nonetheless, uh, a lot of things happening here – in the community, some seasons wrapping up, some seasons getting ready to begin, and uh, the fall sports wrapping up, winter sports uh, amping up to get going here, and uh, not no uh, rest for the weary here. TuckerCountySports.com keeps going. The only time we kind of get some time off is the summer. So. Well, now it's time for me to ask you a question. 
put your coach's hat on. You've had some flex practices. You have some work with the girls. How are things going so far with the girls' basketball program, which will start playing games in early December? Yeah, I mean, it's early. We're, we've we've had some flex practices. we got some girls coming out. Uh, we're trying to, you know, get them into shape, get, get the ball in their hand, get some uh, skill work done. You know, we have been doing a little bit of scrimmaging, not much, uh, but uh, things are going good. We're uh, we're we're going to be young again, and uh, uh, all of our experience is, is in our youth. So it'll be an interesting season nonetheless. But uh, you know, we're always ex- excited to get the season going, and uh, hopefully, it's a normal season this year. Don't run and do twenty eighteen games in six weeks again ever. So uh, <laughs> that is hard, really. <laughs> so hopefully we can do 22 and, and more of a wider span here. That COVID uh, season last year. Here's a question you talk for to you. any coach, they don't want to do that ever again. Here's a question for you. Do you think returning players will benefit playing a little bit later last year in a more of a jam-packed schedule for this year or would have been more beneficial if they had the regular schedule spread out, so to speak, for this year? What do you think? You think it's going to help them a little bit more this well, year or worse? I think that some of these kids were thrown into a situation they've never been in, and it was not a normal situation. So I think, honestly, they benefited from playing, but it wasn't a normal season in the fact that they got the true experience. And what I mean by that is one or two games, three at the most during the week instead of four. You know, and we were playing on average of four games a week. So – the practice time and the practice details that you normally would do in a regular season wasn't able to be done. I mean, you know, we, you weren't able to get – I felt like I wasn't able to get my team in shape like I needed them to be just because they were so tired from playing games. So you almost were working and putting stuff in, you know, on in, during games, and that's when you were repping your stuff you were putting in. So uh, it was not a normal season where you kind of got to work with kids and you got to run over stuff more in practice. So that part of it wasn't normal. So I really felt like the freshman class last year kind of got slighted in that mm-hmm. aspect, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, the other classes did too. But when you're coming in as a freshman, you know, re- it's really important to get that rep time in practice. And I feel like our freshmen didn't get that. They weren't able to get some of those reps that they need. And uh, hopefully this, this year's freshman class will get that opportunity along with all the other classes. Uh, and hopefully we'll just uh, press on in here and have a regular normal season. Well, second half about to begin. We're about 40 seconds away, I think, and I said this earlier, and I'll say it again in bold text and (laughs) language. The first drive of the second half for Tucker County could be the most important drive of this game at this point. You go down and score. You take the lead. Maybe run some clock. Feel good about yourself. Give the defense a little momentum. If you come out here and go three and out, or maybe get one first down and half the punt, give it back to Southern for a chance to put their offense back on the field. Sooner or later, that defense is going to wear down, I'm afraid, because in a game like this, you got 16 guys against 18, and I think whoever controls the ball in the second half is going to win this game, period. Oh, definitely, and uh, you know, momentum is a big part of that. And Tucker County, offensively, Chris, it doesn't have the momentum going into the locker room. Southern does, so you got to get that, steal that back from Southern, and the only way to do that is come out here and just march this ball down the field and uh, you get it in the end zone and get ahead. The team ahead is going to have the advantage, and I, that kind of sounds cliche, but that'll put, that'll put the pressure on the other team and, and allow them to maybe uh, be a little more conservative when it's fourth down at midfield or that sort of thing. So that's it's going to be a big uh, – Big advantage for whoever scores first here in the second half and whoever takes that momentum back. We gave you the team staffs, team, team stats at halftime. Individual statistics, Ethan Rosenall has completed six out of 12 passes for 86 yards, including that touchdown to Racer Channel. Channel's leading receiver, three catches for 49 yards. Maddox Anderson had a big catch for 23. Wesley Strollman a catch for six, for six yards. And J.J. Knotts, one catch for eight. Rushing-wise, J.J. Knotts has five carries for 15 yards. Jared Real, leading rusher in the first half, seven carries, 37 yards rushing. All right, here we go. And for individual for Southern, Austin Spiker, 11 carries, 85 yards in the first half. K1 Clark, 13 carries for 63 yards. And the quarterback, Tyler Strauser, three carries, 22 yards, including the 15-yard touchdown run in the first quarter for 
the only points in the first half for the Rams. And here we go. Tucker to get it first, we hope. Yeah. Yeah, be careful here of an onside kick. Yeah, I mean, in a game like this, Southern, <laughs> they're liable to, you know. Here's the other thing we didn't mention. Southern has never scored more than six points in the game all year. So, hey, that, that means something mentally. It does, I'm telling you. They may stress a little bit more, try to strain a little bit more, and well, we may see more mistakes because of it. We'll find out. Well, Tucker scored, well, he scored 28 against Berkeley Springs. Mm-hmm. That, I, you know, we, we haven't talked about that. We'll talk about that maybe later, but. That Berkeley Springs game is looming large here on this Tucker schedule. Kick away from Warnick right down the middle of the field. Low line drive, bounces, and here comes, looks like real to 20, 25, 30, 35, and shy of the 40-yard line comes the returner. I Jared believe it was real. real. Yep, yep, Jared Real. Okay. Yeah, I think he's quicker than his brother Brett was. No offense to Brett, but I think old Jared's got a little bit more speed. He's definitely smaller than Brett was. <laughs> Now, Brett's probably saying, no way in heck is my brother quicker than me. I don't know. Jared's a, a quick, strong freshman. I would say that. I mean, he's got lots of years left here and a bright future on this football field. Plays basketball, too. Spot the ball to 38. First and 10 for the Lions. Two receivers wide to the right, two to the left. Slot receiver to the right is Racer Channel. Maddox Anderson is the lone wide receiver to the left. Split backs in the shotgun. Play action pass. Fires over the middle. Caught. Maddox Anderson has the first down. Little hitch route and gets across midfield and down to the Southern Garrett, Maryland, 46-yard line. Yeah, that's what I've want, been wanting to see, Chris. Maddox Anderson got the advantage out there on the edge. There's a nice route running, and that's a great example there. And that time, Rosenall put his foot in the ground and threw a nice pass. Good to see from Tucker to start this third quarter. 15 yards on the pass. And that puts Rosenall over 100 yards passing on the evening. First and 10 at the Southern 47. High snap. He pulls it down. Inside handoff. And that's Jared Reel. Gets across the 45 and down to the Southern 44-yard line. Pick up a three. A nice job there by the line. And a positive gain of three yards. For Tucker. Keep pounding away at that interior line and that A gap between the guard and center. And there hasn't been much room in there tonight. This southern team is pretty physical up front. Maddox Anderson wide out left. Two receivers to the right. Split back shotgun. Second and seven from the southern 44. Snap back. Rosenall. Three-step drop. Fires over the middle. It's dropped and incomplete. A little slant to Anderson. Came in a little bit low. Third down. And again, not stepping forward as he passes the ball. Rosenall on his back feet. Yeah, good point, Dave. And it's short on the pass. And uh, wasn't the pass he threw earlier to Maddox Anderson, so he's got to figure that out. He's He's been doing a pretty good job of that throughout this season, but tonight hasn't, hasn't uh, did that well. Third down seven, two receivers to both left and right. They're going to empty the, set, empty the gun. Anderson goes out. The middle, it is caught instead. That's Racer Channel, not Maddox Anderson. And Racer Channel races his way for a first down across the 20 and down to the southern 17-yard line. Little, little uh, crossing route over the middle on the right hash, caught for the first down. It's the uh, same, same pattern he ran in the first half, Chris. He just sat down in that zone, little curl route. Rosenall found him in the inside of that zone. And a uh, little Wes Welker type play, and he gets the first down there. 17 yards on the pass to Channel. 66 yards now, four catches for Racer Channel. And they're going to run a quarterback isolation play up the middle and not much running room there. Give him a yard to the 26 maybe. First one of those I've seen tonight. We'll give him a yard, second and nine. You can pin... The left side of this line, maybe you can go back to that option pitch off the left or the right side. Now, you got big Dom Malnix over at right tackle. You like him. We'll see what they do here. I'd like to work that option in here a couple more times if we can. Second nine at the 26. Back to pass. A little three-step drop, and it's low for Stratum and an incomplete. Dangerous pass there. Very, very fortunate that was not a pick six. Corner out there, jumped the route, got his hand up. No. Batted it down, but very dangerous there. 
Could have been an interception for a touchdown easily. Seen some adjustments in the second half. More three-step drops, more quick passes out of the shotgun. So far, they've been about 50-50. Third and ten here. You'd like to at least get half of this mm -hmm. to make fourth down manageable. Two receivers to both left and right. They're going to empty the gun again. Rosenhall back to pass. Back pedals, fires, and we got a flag on the play. It's going to be a hold against Tucker. And the ball incomplete intended for J.J. Knotts out of the backfield. Another fadeaway pass by Rosenhall. Yeah. Had nobody out there, nobody on him. He, he could have set his feet, got in a hurry, pass went away. And it's going to be a hold on Tucker County. I'm surprised they don't decline this yeah, here. Fourth and it. ten. I would not take this penalty. But they're probably thinking they scored on us fourth nope, and 19. They no, they're it. going to decline it. Interesting. They decline it, make it fourth and 10. I, that's probably what I would have done. Mm, don't interesting. Wanna, don't want to back them up here. This, I'll tell you what, this Tucker County passing game, I think it's scaring Southern a little bit because if you weren't scared of it, you probably would have took that penalty for field position. But uh, nonetheless, fourth and 10 here for Tucker. They scored on a fourth and 19 play back in the first half. Shotgun formation. Real is the lone setback. Rosenall rolls left, fires incomplete. Try to get it far side to Jacob Barrett. Incomplete pass. Turn and it's fourth downs. down. Now first down Southern. No good drive by Tucker is cut short on the turnover on downs, and they give it back to Southern with what, 939 left in the third down in Southern Territory. Well, the one thing you did that time was is you got a couple first downs, moved the ball a little bit. Southern's going to take over from their own 26, first and 10. Not great, but not terrible. And they're going to hand it off. Here comes the big fullback, Sloan, up the middle, off the left side, across the 20 and down to the 24-yard line. Or check that, across the 30 to the 34-yard line, gain of eight. They're going to spot him back to the 33, give him seven yards. That's the biggest run of the night for a Braden Sloan. And it's going to be second down and three. Yeah, you got to make a play. The key to stopping this wing T offense is to hold them to three yards or less on first down. And, uh, not good there. You gave up five. And we got whistles down below. Movement. Nope, timeout. Southern. That's okay. Let them burn their timeouts. They may need those later. Timeout Southern. 8.57 to go, quarter number three. We're still tied at six. Yeah, still tied at six, Chris, and uh, still neither team uh, gathered this momentum back as Tucker County was on the brink of gathering uh, some momentum, unable to punch it in. They drove it down to Southern's 27-yard line, but the drive stalls. And they turn it over on down Southern now with the ball for the first time in the second half looking to get something together on offense. But timeout now to discuss it. And while we have this timeout, we're going to remind everybody watching, Tucker County uh, sports here on the audio, but the video is being provided by St. George Medical Clinic. I want to thank them for Providing the video for these games, football and basketball and volleyball. And I want to thank Chris George for joining us tonight. He's a busy man on Friday night, but he uh, took some time out to help us call this game tonight. And uh, always uh, nice to have him back, everybody back together. Handoff comes to Spiker near side. He's run out of bounds. First Should down. have enough for the first down. As Jacob Barrett runs him out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Pick up of the play of six yards for Spiker. And that puts him at 91 yards now rushing on the evening. First down Southern at the Tucker 39. They'll spot the ball back officially to the 38. Yeah, Coach Rapp in the pregame interviews that he wanted to force Southern to pass. And they've only thrown one pass tonight, so they have not forced Southern to pass yet. And that's not good. Key right here is to stop him on first down to two or three yards or less. Ball next, showing blitz from his middle linebacker position. Here he comes, and they're going to slip it to the fullback. Good job, Tucker. They bring him down. It wasn't Ball next, though. Instead, it was West. It was uh, Levi Pennington, 5'8", 210, and a junior, bringing down 
the big foot well, was actually Austin Spiker. And they'll put that ball down officially at the 39. Gain of one. That's a winner. Second and nine for Tucker. Yeah, Good Gavin, job. Gavin Monix also in there helping with the tackle. Brother of Don Monix. Those of you who didn't know that. Yeah, got a couple brother tandems on this team. Garrett and Trent Wilfong as well. Second down nine. Baxter split wing to the left. Tyler Strouser's the quarterback. He's going to fake it. He's going to roll right. He's going to throw the football down the far side in. Complete and intended for Warnick at the Tucker 48. Coverage on the play far side. It looked like that was Maddox Anderson. It was. Third down and nine. I like it. Yeah, only, uh, what, the second pass attempt by Southern mm -hmm. tonight, I think. You're exactly right. And they pass it on second down, which is even more strange. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I thought they should just keep pounding away, but, hey, that's that's their doings. Yeah, now they're third down and nine, long nine. And the key here is to keep it from being fourth and short. You because gotta see, you, you got to think there's going to be a run here. Yeah. Watch for that uh, quarterback iso play mm -hmm. that they got the big gain on in the first half. Okay. Or, or the reverse. Good Warnick ahead. line up wide right, wing left. Another timeout here coming from Southern. We got a flag nope. down. It's a late game. game. Boy, wow. that's, that's even better for that's Tucker. That's huge. Huge. Southern slow getting out of the huddle. And they'll have a third down and 14 now. And move the ball back to the Southern 34 yard line. Now, the Berkeley Springs game, Chris, Tucker County gave up a bunch of huge plays on third and long here. This is what you don't want to do if you're Tucker. You don't want to give up a long pass play here. Strouser hands it off, and right up the middle comes the big fullback. He fumbles the football, and it's caught out of the air by Tucker County's Wesley Strautum. And his, the big fullback, Brayton Sloan, fumbles the football. He would have had the first down. <laughs> And out comes the pig stand, and there to catch it is the free safety Strottleman. First down, Tucker at their own 47-yard line. Turnover number three for Southern. Wow, what a play that was. Yeah, that was out of the weird plays we've seen in the first half. There was even uh, the crazier play. Ball never hit the ground, folks. I know you're watching back home, but the ball never hit the ground. And uh, Strottleman caught it out of the air, and Tucker County will take the ball over. Right place, right time for Wesley Strottleman. Hey, he's had a nose for the football all year on defense, and that's why. You get there and look, you never know when the ball may come your way. Tucker needs to take advantage here. First and 10 at their own 47, good field position. They'll fake the handoff. Little hook route, far side, too low. Again, his feet not set. Far side of the field, incomplete. Maddox Anderson, the intended receiver. Yeah, that hit on to, to cause that fumble was by Maddox Anderson. Just seen the replay. Yeah, and, you know, just got to get his feet set. You may want to think about maybe moving the pocket a little bit to his left on those on those pass routes to the far side. Maybe that will get him to set his feet. I, I'm not sure. Or just tell him, look, if you feel like there's something coming, you know, look, step up in the pocket a little bit, give yourself a little time to set and throw. Okay, three receivers to the right, one left, second and ten from their own 47. Rosenall drops the pass. Again, he's backpedaling. And, he, again, why the mark? Incomplete. They tried to set up a screen far side to J.J. Knotts. He has been antsy all night, and I don't know what's going on there, but that was just a screen pass, Chris. Yeah. Uh, one of those deals where you, you really give away some yardage and then throw it to him, but Rosenheim has got to do a better job. No one, with, no one around him. He's got to set his feet and throw a good pass. Third down and ten. Well, you really hate to go three and out here after getting that turnover. 7.46 to go on a stop clock here in the third. And Tucker's going to call a timeout to talk about it. Yeah, it's important uh, third down here. Like to at least get across midfield here and get close to the first down marker so you have a chance to go for it. But uh, neither team here offensively playing well and defense is winning. While we have a chance here, we'll uh, take a quick break here and hear from our sponsors on TuckCountySports.com. This TuckerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. Jim's All-Star. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. 
Robert Estates Incorporated, Performance Collision, Fargo Insurance Group, and by United Financial Service. Back here at R.H. Armstrong Memorial Field, Class of 1984 Stadium, Tucker County Southern, all tied at six. Rosenall is 0 for his last five passing. Keep that in mind as well. But, again, I stress, third down and ten here, always a chance here if you can get a little bit of time because the receivers seem to be getting open. Just got to connect here and execute. Shotgun formation, two receivers to both left and right. They send the slot receiver for motion from left to right. Rosenall to throw. Steps into it this time. Throws downfield, incomplete. Far side of the field, double coverage on Maddox Anderson at the southern 30. It's fourth down. Rosenall 0 for his last six. There again, a, a decent pass out there, but Rosenall and Rosenall, he, he misjudged it. He did, but Anderson misjudged it as well. He jumped early. Yeah, I, I thought Maddox Anderson kind of thought it was going to be shorter mm-hmm. and then end up hit over his head. I really think if he would kept running, he had a better chance at it. I uh, like the first half pass he, he missed. J.J. knots the punt, and he gets the way. Much better punt this time. It sails down, and a fair catch called for by the Rams at their own 26-yard line. They take over from there, first down 10. It's a game of defense here. Might have to have a score on defense to well, yeah. whoever else win this game. Why not? They've had, a, they've had that happen to them this year. Remember the t- Tigers Valley game? Yep. Dom Mall next to flex a, a pass in the end zone and caught it himself for the touchdown. Well, you just never know when you may need one. There's been a, been a ton of turnovers tonight, that's for sure. All right, first down 10. Again, this Southern Garrett Maryland team has run the football well tonight. And they're going to go a little bit unbalanced, line to the right, the wing to that side. And they're going to run off that right side. No, they're going to fake it. They're going to hand it off to the fullback. Right up the middle comes Sloan. A little quick hitter across the 30 to the 35-yard line comes the big junior fullback. Yeah, and he fooled everybody there at Southern. Nine yards for Sloan. Three or four Tucker County Mountlines run right by the runner, thinking the action was going to be in the backfield. So you see what they've made some adjustments the second half. Instead of running wide, if they're running back out of this wing tee, they've been slipping to the fullback on the belly play a couple different times, running some quick traps up the middle, and it's worked, except the one time Sloan did fumble. Yeah, and the thing that you want to always do if you're a linebacker, you want to watch that guard and follow him. Second one, outline show blitz, Sloan the ball carrier hit. Moves forward, has the first down before he's finally dropped at the 39, maybe the 38-yard line. Tom Malnex and also a guy we've called a lot tonight, Levi Pennington in there on the stop. Yeah, that was a nice play there by the Tucker interior line. They get the first down, though, on that play. Four yards for Sloan. So, again, they've called his name here four times in this third quarter. 6.30, 6.30, under 6.30 and ticking on a third quarter clock. Score till still tied, 6-6. Wing set up to the left. They got a tight end that way as well. The run off the left side, and the ball carry gets across the 40 and down to the 42-yard line, and that is the running back, K1 Clark. Have not seen him carry since the first quarter. And tackle. give him the 42, gain of three. Tackle made by J.J. Nantz. Got off his block and made a nice tackle there. So, K1 Clark, 66 yards on 14 carries. Austin Spiker has 91 yards on 13 carries. And Braden Sloan, 39 yards on six carries. Second and seven for the Rams at their own 42. Wings set up to the right. And they're going to give it to the fullback. Right at the middle he goes into the first down and more across midfield and finally down to the mount line, 48. That belly play again. Quick hitter. Killing Tucker here in this defense. Not they did not see it again, and he gets about five or six yards, actually ten, right? Yeah, give him ten. So the fifth time Braden Sloan has carried, they've all been for really eight yards, eight yards or more for the most part. Late change for Tucker on the defensive front. This time they'll hand the spiker from left to right. He's tripped up in the backfield and dropped, but he dives forward. Jared Real brings him down. 
Spiker will get two yards to the 46, second and eight. And this Tucker defense, I said it earlier, but they're missing dearly Tyler Collar. Oh, yeah, they are. Did a lot of good in the interior of that defense, and it's showing tonight. Owen Porter now out there at defensive end on the right side for Tucker. Second and eight, and there's the fullback again on the quick hitter. Right up the middle he goes, off the B gap, BC gap, and he crossed the 40 and down to the 39, close to a first down. And they have wore that play out on this drive, and they found something, and Tucker's going to have to make an adjustment here. They're going to have to figure that play out, or it's going to hurt them here dearly. And not too long of a time frame. Seven more for Sloan. It's going to be third down about a yard, maybe not even that. 420 and turning in the third quarter in a 6-6 game. May need another turnover here. Back out there for Tucker is Owen Knotts on defense. They show blitz through the mount lines, and they'll give it again to the full back, and he gets the first down, does Sloan. Yeah, that belly play again, but not as much this time, but enough to move the chains. Gain of two. First and ten Southern at the Tucker 37-yard line. And the quarterback, Tyler Strouser, gets the call from head coach John Naselrod at the sideline near side. Into the huddle he goes. I have a feeling they're going to have a bootleg out of this sooner or later. Fake it and go off one way or the other. Let's see how they play this. Wing to the right. Backs are split. And they're going to hand it off to the wing back. That's Spiker from right to left. Spiker off the left side. Breaks one tackle. Has the first down to Moore. Up the near sideline. Across the 20 and all the way down to the mount lines. 17-yard line before he's running the bounce near side and a southern first down. I was worried about this. That defense has got to be getting tired. They're getting tired, and then Spiker, has got some speed. He got down to the outside there and turned on those jets and surprised a couple Tucker County defenders and ran by them for a big game. Up over 100 yards now, Spiker, 113 yards now on 15 carries. First down 10, southern at the Tucker 17. Second time tonight, Tucker on their heels on defense here. Warning split out wide left. Backs are split. And they're going to give it to the big fullback. And this time he's going to be hit at the line and going nowhere. Maybe forward lean gets him a yard. That is it. Jared Reel was one of them in there. And the big offensive lineman down now for Southern. Yeah, not good. Or is that Sloan? No, it's the nope, it is lineman. 65, I believe. And that's their center. Jeff Miller, who was not their original starting center to begin the season. Injury timeout here. Is it Jet, Jeff or Jet? Ball at the 17-yard <laughs> line, second down and 10. And while we they check on the injured player, we're going to take a quick break here and hear from some, some sponsors here on TuckCountySports.com. This TuckerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Mr. Pizza of Parsons, Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, Kidwell Auto Parts, Bob Gutshaw, Cortland Acres, Mountain Valley Bank, Sirianni's Cafe, and by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting Mountain Lion action on your home of Tucker County Sports, TuckerCountySports.com. Second, second half score in the third quarter. Number five, Morfield has taken the lead now on number three, East Hardy and Baker, 19-18. Boy, that is going to come down to the wire in that one. More scores in single A, and we'll look at that Pendleton County Pocahontas game. Still 12-7 Pocahontas. That has now moved in to the fourth period of play. Triple A scoreboard. See if anything stands out. University leads Buchanan at the half, 43-0. That stands out because of the score. I'm um, looking down here. Anything to note? Morgantown in the third leads Parkersburg South 21 7. William Park and Musselman now tied at 14 in the third quarter. And by in Inwood. Double A scoreboard. Number 13, Logan has taken lead on number two, Polka 13. Check that 12 to 7 in the third period. And more scores. Fourth quarter now. Number eight, North Marion leads Lewis County 37 to nothing. Fourth quarter in Cumberland, Allegheny leads Kaiser. 24 to 7. So Kaiser's going to drop to 3 and 3 on the season. Third quarter, number 10, Robert C. Bird and Fairmont Senior tied at 14. Fairmont lost their quarterback, by the way. Yep. The white, the uh, yep. uh, name Brody White here. Brody White here lost him to a lower leg injury. He's done for the year. 
Liberty Harrison 27, East Fairmont 14. That is a third quarter score in Clarksburg. More and, scores in a bit. And Miller hobbling off the field for Southern. Doesn't look good for him on his evening continuing. And Southern will have to figure this out without their center. His center, right? Yep, and they're going to put in Caden Gank, a senior, in there to replace him. Again, another handoff. Coming through is Spiker, and he breaks one tackle, gets across the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. Give him four. Now here's where Tucker's defense got to step up. Third and long here, a third and six or seven. And they got two plays here to get this ball back and kill this southern drive and kill their momentum. Now let's see what they do here. Third down and... A short seven, almost six. Ball resting at the 13-yard line. Gavin Warnick, a pretty good athlete, lines up as a receiver wide to the right. Single coverage on that side. Ooh. Late snap back to the quarterback, and it disrupts the timing of the play, and Don Mullenix and crew bring down Spiker at the 11-yard line. Gain of two. Levi Pennington also there to help make the tackle. It's going to be fourth down in about five. <laughs> Well, this is it. Got to stop him here. I mean, you got to think. You got to be careful on your backside. If you are. Yeah, you got to. Your DN's got to keep their yeah. positions, not gamble, come up the field, but don't get caught and pinned and keep everything in the yeah. inside. And let's Opposite tight end here. Get a, t get a turnover on downs here. 130 left in this third. This is crucial. Tight end to the right. Keep backside contained to the left. They're going to hand it off the left side. And back backside contained is there in the form of middle linebacker Dom Onyx. He brings down Spiker for a loss back to the 13-yard line and the Mount Lions hold on fourth down. Yeah, good D there. Dom Onyx gets up. He's all pumped up. I was hoping they didn't give him a flag there. He was just excited he made the play. He wasn't doing anything uh, crazy, but uh, and nonetheless, Don Monix makes a big play there and gives Tucker County the ball back. They're backed up, but they'll take it because they stopped the Rams. Yeah, at the 13-yard line. Boy, the middle of the field's been open for Tucker. If they can just connect on some of these passes across the middle. Southern's been playing one single high safety the entire night. Shotgun formation split backfield. Those two linebackers are playing up on the line of scrimmage as well, and they're going to hand it off, and we got a late flag on the play. It looks like it could be a hold. As Jared Reel gets across the 15 and down to the 16, but let's see what the laundry says the call will be. Holding TCHS. Half the distance here. Oh boy. Backed up again. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, three-yard carry. You don't mind those. You'll take them, but then you get that hold. Now it's going to be first and long. Oh. And they're going to put the football down at the nine. Well, it's not a 10-yard penalty at least. Check that. Sorry, Dave. They'll put the football down at the five. Yeah, I was say, it shouldn't be a 10-yard penalty, but it's pretty close. Yeah, they moved it back eight yards. Yeah, no. Actually, no, they moved it back. The hold must have occurred yeah. right at the line of scrimmage then. Okay, so first down, call it about 15 or so to go. Play clock at 10. They better roll here. At their own five-yard line. Shotgun formation split backfield. They're going to run it off the near side, and that is not or Jared Reel, and he gets a couple, and that is it, and he's run out of bounds by the Rams on that near sideline. Yeah. Warnick and crew bring him down. Give him the seven-yard line, gain of two. Yeah, Tucker backed up here. You'd like to get out of the shadow of your own end zone here to – at least for your punt situation, if that, that is what you're going to do, first down would be great. But well, If you can just break through that first level because these two inside linebackers are playing tight to the line. The outside backers are up on the line of scrimmage as well. Second down pass, hitch route, far sideline, complete. Nice Maddox cut. Anderson breaks one tackle, stays on his feet, has the first down and more, breaks three. He's across the 35 to the 40 and tackled at the mount line. Late flag, too. 42-yard line with a flag on the play. Yeah, probably going to add 15 here on a face mask. little right. hitch route to Anderson, and he broke a couple tackles, and then the speed took off, and he's hey, hurt. Anderson's still down. Not good. And they're going to spot the ball at the 42. 
pick up on the play at 35 yards. Maybe he's cramping. That'd be the best scenario here. And it looks like that's what Coach Gutschall was grabbing, his foot to stretch him out here. Maybe a little calf cramping. A sideline warning for Tucker. So that, that's the first one. So it's not a penalty, just a warning. Uh, a little excited over there on the Tucker sideline, I think. And they were out. What What was that, Chris? Second and 18 or something? Mm -hmm. First down there. Moves the chains. As Matic Anderson getting worked on over there on the side. Anderson, three catches, 73 yards on the night. I'm not sure what's going on there. I thought maybe they were stretching him out, but now... Well, let me get my trusty binoculars out. Looks like they might be. It giving, is the giving, lower leg. Giving him a little knee test there. Looks like Coach Gutschall is. But nonetheless, uh, we won't speculate. But uh, Maddox Anderson, a big part of this game tonight. He's had some big-time catches there. Him and Racer Channel both had some big gains on some crucial plays. That one pretty crucial. Second down and long, and he moves the chains. with He had a great cut there, Chris, to, to free him up, and then he raced down the sidelines, tackled by three Southern defenders there as he finished the play. It's the right lower leg of Maddox Anderson, and he's got his hands gripping the face mask, so I hope and pray this isn't serious. But you know those, ca those cramps can hurt as much as anything. He's up now on his feet, and he's limping off. I think it's a cramp, but I don't know. All right, well, he's up and going, so uh, that's a good thing for Tucker County. They'll be first and 10 here, right at uh, their own 44. So a good job by Tucker to get out of that bad situation they were just in. What was the flag? We had a flag down. sideline warning. Sideline warning, so the next one will be a, will be a flag. Okay. Yeah, sideline warning was the flag. Can Tucker County get something going here on offense? Just seems like they've been in the quicksand all night. 139 yards passing on the evening now for Rosenall. First and 10 from their own 44. Inside handoff. Up the middle. Good running room for J.J. Knotts. He'll get to the 46, gain of two, second and eight. And it's been tough sledding for Tucker in the middle there all evening. And that's the end of our third quarter. Well, the score at the half was 6-6. The score at the end of three is still 6-6. Back of the fourth quarter on TuckerCountySports.com. This TuckerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Patty Nichols, attorney at law. Jim's all-star. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. Robert Estates Incorporated. Performance Collision, Fargo Insurance Group, and by United Financial Service. And now back to more exciting Mount Lion action on your home of Tucker County Sports, right here at TuckerCountySports.com. More scores on our scoreboard. Everything's the same in single A that we gave you a little bit ago. Remember, Morfield just took the lead back on East Hardy, 19-18, quarter number three. Uh, let's take a look at the double-A scoreboard now. Well, we got a chance here and scroll down here to anything different. North Marion still leads Lewis County 37-0. That's a fourth-quarter score. Kaiser has scored. Cuts the lead a little bit. Allegheny leads Kaiser in the fourth quarter in Cumberland 24-14. to Okay, so we'll look at the – keep an eye on that scoreboard as this fourth quarter here rolls on. Ball resting at the 46 of Tucker. Second down and eight for the Mount Lions. Again, single high safety for the Rams, and their man coverage is playing off. Ten yards on the up on the top of the field, or the screen, I should say, and five yards on the bottom of the screen. So those hitch routes are open if you want to go that way. And they've done that a couple times tonight. Handoff up the middle. Jared Reel gets across midfield and down to the Southern Garrett. No, they're going to say his knee touched down at the 50. It's a gain of four, third and four. Yeah, good, good hole there. He just could not get to the right where he needed to be. Sidestepped it and uh, probably would have been time, good time to do a spin move towards the right. But uh, he gets 
caught for a minimal gain there. Make it third down and four. I ain't got some got a lot lot in your playbook for third and four. It's four down territory also. You can stay on the ground here and try to get it and either get it or play for four. Two receivers right, one left. Back to pass, Rosenall. Dumps it out in the flat. Caught by Jarrett Reel behind the line of scrimmage, and he's going to lose a yard to the 49 and drop down there. Yeah, that's Fourth where, down. where Rosenall probably should have faked that one and went deep. Channel wide open up, out in the flat, but uh, he'd already made up his mind and already made his decision. Now Tucker County got to make a decision. Fourth down and five, and they're in punt formation. Yeah. Coach Rapp feels it's a defensive game, which it is, so he's going to play field position and try to back him up here. Or, you never know, they may fake one. J.J. Knotts is the punter. He's a skill player. And they will punt. It is away. Line drive kick far side, caught by the returner. Maddox Anderson back out there. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. Must have been a cramp flag on the play for a push in the back against the Rams. Yeah, that's good. That will back them up. Negate that return. We're in the fourth here, folks, and uh, it's go time. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I really don't feel comfortable going to overtime with a team like Southern that can run the football when you're starting at the 25-yard line. So I'd love to get this game finished in regulation if you're Tucker. Yeah, definitely, and uh, you really don't like the feel of your offense right now, and overtime is not where you want to be if you don't like your offense, so. Okay, they'll move them back. It is a hold against the Rams on the punt return. Their big fullback coming out of the game. Yeah, he was the one with the hold. And he's getting a little less than tall on the near sideline by head coach John Nazaroth. Yeah, but he's the one that's been hurting us on the inside, mm -hmm. so that's a good sign for Tucker. Him on the sideline is a good thing. Southern will scrimmage from their own 25-yard line, first down and 10. Brent Limley into the game of fullback for the Rams. And they'll hand it up a middle, and here comes Spiker. He's going to break free. He's going to take Keep it going. for a touchdown. Austin Spiker takes it for a touchdown. 60. Check that. 75 yards and a touchdown. Yep, and that was that belly play, but it wasn't Sloan. It was Spiker. And that is not good for Tucker County. 75-yard touchdown for Austin Spiker. And that puts him near 200 on the night. Give him 192 in the score. Well, Dave, you made a good point. They slipped him into the fullback position. They brought Limley in, but he brought, came in for Sloan, but they went to the tailback position. There's an important two-point conversion here coming. And they ran the belly play, but this time it was Spiker. And once he got to the second level, he was gone. 75 big ones. Yeah, and we showed, we seen that speed a little bit ago, and he showed it there again. They'll go for a deuce, which is two. And they're going to hand it off. And off the near sideline is Strouser. He's in. Two-point conversion is good. The quarterback gets it. And it's 14-6 Southern with 10-16 to go fourth quarter. Work to do for the Mount Lions. They have to answer. Yes. And don't like that. There's uh, no fight in that two-point conversion from this Tucker D. And they're in trouble, they hear. they got to figure out this offense quickly to answer this Southern score. And uh, you just got a feeling, Chris, in this whole game that this offense just, like I said earlier, stuck in the quicksand it almost seems like. Not able to kind of get any big plays tonight other than a couple pass plays, I, I, I think, in my mind. That's it. No big run plays for this Tucker team, and normally that's not the case. Normally they can they break a few runs here and there, and uh, Southern – with the momentum right here with after that big 75-yard touchdown run. Number three, East Hardy on the board. They lead number five, Moorfield now, late third quarter in Baker, 24-19. to 19. Well, back to this game, Dave. Uh, one thing that's there is those hitch routes, about seven, eight yards, maybe ten, down the field under the corner coverage with the single high free safety. Get a little quick pass out to the hitch, hitch route. Maddox Anderson, Wesley Strahlman, they have shown the ability to catch and run and break some tackles. That is there. It's there all night. The way they're giving us that. Let's take advantage of that and work our way down the field, mix in the run, and maybe we can execute our way to a chance to tie this game. Yeah, I mean, that's our advantage out there in the flat with these receivers. And 
That's what we got to do here. Ten minutes left in this game. We got to get a score to match them. And then the two-point conversion just to tie it up. And then you're going to have to get a stop on defense to have a chance to win this game before overtime. So a lot of things there to talk about. But uh, nonetheless, going to get the ball back here. With a lot of time left. Well, maybe you can do something here on special teams. That'll work as well as is a new kickoff guy. It'll be a Dominic Benninger to kick off for the Rams. And it's a short kick. Bounces in front and gets by. Jacob Barrett picks it up at the 15 to the far side, 20, 25, and he stays on his feet, breaks free to the 40, to the 45, and running a bounce on the far side. So there you go. That's the special team's play we needed. Jacob Barrett returns his football all the way out. Right around that 45-yard line of Tucker County, maybe closer to midfield. And they're marking him at mid, right at midfield, and he was very close to breaking that thing. Got away from the initial tackler, and uh, Southern players kind of stopped thinking he was going to be tackled, and then they had to turn the Jets back on again to get up to him. And Tucker County now with great field position, they got to capitalize. Golden opportunity here for Tucker, first and 10 for midfield. Two receivers left, one to the right. Maddox Anderson back in there as a split in wide right. Top of the screen. Split back shotgun. Hand off. Jared Reel dances his way through and not much there. Gets forward lean down to the 47 of Southern. Give him three, second and seven. Run, run play there. Got to get something going with the run game. Jared Reel now, 49 yards rushing, 11 carries on the evening. But they've been 11 hard carries. Clock, Second and seven. Clock ticking on this fourth quarter clock. And Maddox Anderson wide out top of the screen. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. And they're going to hand it off. Coming near side, Jared Reel hit and dropped. And maybe at the line of scrimmage, that is it. And there is one of those inside linebackers again. And this time it's Noah Wilt. It's either been him or Braden Sloan. And they'll give him the 47, no gain. Third down and six coming up. Now Maddox Anderson lines up as a receiver wide left, bottom of the screen. Crucial play here. Snap back to Rosenall. Fires a hitch route. Caught by Maddox Anderson. First down Tucker across the 40th Southern and out of bounds at the Rams 38-yard line. There you go. They gave him some they gave him some cushion. He ran the hitch. Rosenall executes it with Maddox Anderson. First down, move the chains. 39 is where he spotted down. Yeah, first down play there. And as long as Southern's playing off my receiver, I'm just going to keep throwing that out there. I just I'll five and six yard it down the field and we'll. We'll, we'll score this touchdown. The run game's not there. We've, we've kind of proven that all night. And I know we can't bail out to the pass only. But that play fake will work. Yeah. Single high safety. Corners are playing 10 yards off the outside receivers. Rosenall rolls right. Has time. Throws a little bit too far. Intended for Stroudman at the sticks. Out of bounds. Incomplete. It was there. Just a little bit far. But I like the Roll out to the quarterback. Had him, had, gave him a chance to see the field, set his feet a little bit better on the rollout, just missed his target incomplete. Well, and there's where Rosenau, he probably had about a five, six-yard gain there. Yeah, he should. He if, could, you're right, he could have took off. He could have just took off there and got some yardage, got out of bounds, and preserved the clock and still moved the, moved the yard marker a little bit. But now we're looking at second down and ten. Okay, Maddox Anderson bombed the screen, split into the left. Three receivers tightly bunched to the right. In the gun is Rosenall. Quick pass, dropped. Jacob Barrett tried to get one hand on it, didn't get the other hand on it. Bad pass, sorry. Just not a good pass. Led him too far, and Barrett not able to haul it in. Threw it a little quick, didn't he? Yeah, he, he a little too happy, and uh, it's been that way all night, Chris. It's just not been typical of Ethan Rosenall. It almost looks like the Ethan Rosenall of last year. Back there at the quarterback position. Don't know why, but... Uh, Maybe it's my fault because I'm here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Third down, 10. 
at the 39 of Southern. In motion out of the backfield is Knotts. Rosenall steps up into the throw. Drop. This one's on Knotts. Incomplete. Knotts did not catch it. Yeah, but still, Chris, if he catches it, he maybe has two, three yards. I mean, yeah. it's not a very it's not a very productive play. That's not the read, you know, that you need to be making it. Rosenall needs to be looking down the field. and I'd be looking to number 88 the entire time, he's in my not, opinion. He's not. He's doing his checkoffs. He's not looking to his – to play down the field and uh you know nonetheless it's fourth down here and it's like tucker county takes a timeout one timeout remaining for tucker as well and keep in mind the one time tucker did score back in the first half was on fourth and 19 so yeah maybe fourth down magic again we're going to need it with 809 to go in the game down 14 to 6 time to take a look at the scoreboard here dave i'm going to fire this up here and see if we got any updated scores We'll focus on Class Single A. That's where Tucker County resides, as we know. Number one, Doddridge County now all over Ravenswood, third quarter, 41 to nothing. Moorfield taking the lead back. Late third quarter, Moorfield 25, East Hardy 24. Boy, that's a game to be at. Uh, more scores in Single A. Let's look at that Pendleton County, Pocahontas County game. Fourth quarter in Dunmore, Pocahontas County 12, Pendleton County 7. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. I'll give you a Preston Washington update if they have one. Third quarter, no score. Washington and Preston. Unbelievable. Yeah, and that Moorfield game, there's two 18 left in the third. A 40 yard down, touchdown catch on fourth down to put Moorfield up. Rosen all to pass on fourth and 10. Eludes one. Can't get by the second. He's sacked. Wow, that's a big sack, too, because that's going to put Southern in great field position. Dominic Benninger on the sack. And that was a huge play for Southern. And they'll spot that football back to the 48, a loss of nine on the sack, first down Southern. And a back-breaking play for Tucker. I tell you, Chris, uh, it, this game is almost looking like if this defense for Tucker don't score here, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to score. And uh, maybe that's what it's going to take, a, a pick six here to get Tucker this, this lead to uh, – or just tied back, but uh, now Dom Monix coming off the field. Wing left, receiver warning, bottom of the screen. And they're going to hand it off to the fullback, and that is Spiker again across midfield and down to the Tucker 49-yard line. Dropped there by the Mount Lions on defense, Owen Porter. And the linebacker that time, Chris, just runs by the running back. Real on the blitz, ran right by the runner, didn't even see him. Three yards for Spiker gives him 195 yards rushing on 20 carries tonight. Southern well over 200 yards rushing as a team. And that was their game plan, and they're working on it quite nicely. Second down and seven, Southern at the Tucker 49-yard line. Wing left, receiver to the bottom of the screen. And bobbled handoff, Spiker has it off the left side, and he gets the first down he runs hard, with he? second effort. And mark him shorter than that first down. Yeah, they we're going to say his knee touched down before the second effort dive. It's going to be close to a first down. Third and one. Third in the yard. Ball resting at the Tucker. 43. Gain of six on the play for Spiker, and that puts him over 200 yards. 201 officially. Well, now here, Tucker, you got to get a stop. If you get a stop here, even if it's fourth and one, I think Southern probably punts it here but in the situation they're in. So let's see a tackle for loss here. They got the wing to the right, bottom of the screen. Receiver out wide left. And there's the big fullback, and there's the first down. Why not give it to the big horse, Braden Sloan, as he gets down to the mount line, 39-yard line. Four yards for Sloan, and that gives him 62. You got a feeling that Southern's just happy just handing it off here and milking this clock out. Yeah, I don't think they're going to throw the forward pass the rest of the night. 6.29 6.29 and turning. They've only thrown two, but, hey, they're up 14-6. But keep in mind, they haven't won a game all year, so trying to win is one of the hardest things to do. And you never know. They may get a little bit uh, antsy here and fumble the football or something. They've already turned it over three times tonight. That's Tucker's one thing Tucker needs to do is tackle that football if they can. Wing right. Big fullback gets back to the 40-yard line and no gain, second and ten. Maybe a yard loss on the play. Yeah, and uh, Maddox 
Or, I mean, Don Monick still not out there for Tucker County, so not sure what's going on there. Second and a long 10. You can see the defensive front from Tucker getting a little bit tired out there as we speak. 5.38 and turning. Need another stop here on second down. Wing right, that's Spiker. Warnick splits out top of the screen. And they're going to give it to Spiker. The wing back's going to be hit by Knotts and dropped at the line of scrimmage. No gain, third down coming up. Yeah, that's a good play there by Tucker. They can get a stop here. Next two downs. Maybe they can get this ball back with a timeout and able to maybe tie, have a chance to tie this game. Yeah, keep in mind, one timeout remaining for Tucker as well. Can't give up a first down here. No, that could end the game. With one timeout remaining, you're really in trouble. Hey, okay, be careful here if that little quick trap to the fullback, a little quick hitter. Third down, 10, and they're going to throw the football. Rolling near side. Nope, they're going to run it, and it's a first down by Strouser, and he's going to slide at the mount line, 24-yard line, There's first a down. hold out there in the flat, and they missed it. They had a hold of Maddox Sanderson's jersey, and they did not call it. Unbelievable. That's the second time tonight they've run that little quarterback sweep off a play-action look. The first one resulted in a touchdown. This one resulted in another 16-yard carry for Tyler Strouser. If you're scouting the Southern, you almost want to just not let if you can guard the receiver and go tackle the quarterback and let, take your chances on whether he's going to throw it or not. 4.24 to go. Tucker has one timeout. And that is it. Southern's going to hand it off. It's Spiker. Breaks through. He's inside the 10 and down to the 9. First and goal, Rams. And there again. Tucker County linebackers overrunning the play and not there to make the tackle. And they'll spot that football at the 8-yard line. Gain of 16 for Spiker. And if you've not seen, one thing that, you know, Tucker hasn't seen a lot of this all, this kind of offense this mm -hmm. year, so that's a little confusing for for defense. First and goal at the eight. Back in the wing tee go the Rams. And they're going to hand it off. It's Spiker off the left side. He dives close to the goal line. He stopped uh, he at the four, right knee down there. Yeah, he's the out about the four. Yeah, knee down at the four. You know one thing about Spiker, Dave, he always falls forward. You notice that? He run, always falling forward. He runs forward. hard. That, that kid runs hard. He's He's got a high motor. And, yeah, you're right. He always falls forward. Always give him best effort. 221 yards rushing now for Spiker tonight on 24 carries. Wow. Bottom of the screen, one lone receiver. They send the wing in motion. Fumble. Strouser rolls right, keeps it. He's going to be hit. Flag on the play. He scores, but he it's scores, going to come but back. It's not going to happen because we got a flag down. Tucker was being held. Now they call the hold. <laughs> the thing about it was, too, is it looked like he fumbled that snap. He did. And picked it right back up. Keep in mind, they got a backup center in there right now. As Miller was hurt earlier. Holding is the call. And they're going to say the hold occurred right at the one-yard line. So we'll move this back to about the 11. So give Strouser three yards on the carry, officially. So, but they'll move this ball, more importantly, back to the 11. 3.05 on the stop clock, fourth quarter. Southern 14, Tucker 6. And it's second down and goal from the 11. And that hold, Chris, is the same receiver for Southern that held on that big play for the first down that they didn't call. Wing to the right. Backs are split behind the quarterback, Strouser. And he's going to give it to Spiker right up the gut. He's into the end zone for the Southern Rams touchdown. 11-yard run for Spiker, his second touchdown of the evening, and it's 20-6. to six. Yeah, and that's a backbreaker for Tucker. 230 yards now for Spiker on the night. 
Again, they line him up at that full back position. That quick hitter, it's worked the entire second half day. Good adjustment by Southern. They went away from that in the first half. They ran a little more to the tailback side on the sweep plays, and the adjustment to that is go to the fullback. We saw a lot of Sloan in the third quarter. He got shaken up, and then they bring in Spiker, who we saw at tailback. They moved him to fullback, and, well, the rest is history. They'll go for two. They're in the eye. And they're going to give it to the fullback. Sloan's back in there, and he runs hard, but I think he's going to be – no, he's in. Two-point conversion is good. It's 22-6 Southern with 3.01 to go in this fourth quarter. And we'll pause for this quick message. This TuggerCountySports.com broadcast is being brought to you by Mr. Pizza of Parsons, Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, Kidwell Auto Parts, Bob Gutshaw, Cortland Acres, Mountain Valley Bank, Sirianni's Cafe, and by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting mountain line action on your home of Tucker County Sports, TuckerCountySports.com. Okay, we're back here in Parsons. Scoreboard still the same as we last saw. Let's take a look at some double-A scores. Polka now has won. Number two, Polka has defeated Logan. Final score, 14-12. And Putnam County tonight, final as well. Number three, Independence, 74, man seven. The Hillbillies were non-existent in that one. Third quarter score, number 15, Scott Lee's Number six, Liberty Rally, 14-0 in Madison. Braxton County is going to lose again. It's Roan County, 42, Braxton, 6. That's a third quarter score. Final score in Cumberland, Allegheny of Maryland beat Kaiser, 31-14. Fourth quarter, Fairmont Senior on the board behind quarterback Dom Stingo, 21-14 over RCB. And Liberty Harrison, another touchdown. They lead East Fairmont, 34-14 in the game. That's going to hurt Shane Eccles' playoff hopes there, I believe. And he's tardy. They take the lead. As the kick goes out of bounds, the Tucker – can take this at the 35 or make Southern re-kick it. What's old Carl have to say on Twitter? Uh-huh. Our old green jeans Carl. I'm Actually, sure he's got his green jeans tonight. still the same. In the start of the fourth quarter, 25-24, Moorfield's still leading. Green jeans Carl. Yeah. He's probably got a blue shirt and a green jeans on tonight to represent both schools. Yeah, probably. Carl Holcomb, Moorfield examiner. He can't miss him. So Tucker will take the ball. At the 35 and scrimmage there first and 10. They need two scores quickly. 301 left in this game. Well, Southern's going to drop a second safety, and that's exactly what they're doing here. So, second safety, well, as I look down, I am wrong. They're still playing off on the outside receivers and one single high safety. Still an eight man box. Rosenall to pass. Punk fakes. Now throws. Far side. Double coverage. Racer Channel pulls it in for the first down across midfield and slung down top of the screen at the 49-yard line. Yeah, Make it to 48. Yeah, you got to go quickly here if you're Tucker. You got to score, get an onside kick, and score again. And you got to go quick here. Six, 17 yards to Channel, his fifth catch of the night. Snap the ball. Go. Back to pass is Rosenall, fires near side, intercepted by Strouser. Look out. Here he goes across midfield to the 40, to the 35. Breaks through one tackle, and that's not Strouser. That's the free safety, number 12, who we do not have on our roster. And he returns the interception out to the 20-yard line, and Maddox Anderson is down again on the play. I hope he's okay. Yeah, he's. I think he's cramped up again. And uh, Ethan Rosenau just forcing it into double coverage there and uh, not able to complete that pass. And Southern intercepts it to essentially end this game. Looks like there will be a couple runs here by Southern, maybe in a touchdown. Maybe a uh, score here. They, they'll probably try to punch another one in here, but yeah. uh, Tucker County's got a man. They got some regrouping to do. And I mean, yeah. honestly, Chris, maybe the worst thing that could have happened for Tucker is take a week off because that's a different team that we've seen than I've seen against Pendleton County, especially defensively. And I know Tyler Collar not playing tonight, uh, but uh, this Tucker County offense also 
just just couldn't get going tonight. Well, you take a look at the remaining schedule for Tucker County. They're going to drop to two and five with the loss. They've got Gilmer County away next week, and Ian Hamrick, the fine quarterback for the Titans, is really good. And then you got home games with Petersburg and South Harrison, winnable games, but that South Harrison team's going to line up in a stick eye, and they're going to do a lot of what you saw tonight. So, <laughs> you know, a chance for yep. – this was the game you had to have. If you wanted to think playoffs, a, real, a realistic chance at the playoffs, you had to win this one. Now the playoffs are yeah, very slim now. Well, and you come into this season, and, you know, I would think you would say no one thought right. that the Tucker County Mountain Lions had a chance to make the playoffs. So you can play that a couple ways. You can mm-hmm. kind of turn it around a little bit and, and say, you know, with two wins already, the season's actually <laughs> – Probably went better than what most people thought, but you know, we're back to action now here as Southern has the ball. And they're gonna go they're gonna tighten the formation now. And they're gonna hand it off to Sloan, the big full back down to the nineteen he goes, gain a three. And if you're Tucker County, you definitely don't call a timeout here. You just let this clock run out and take your loss twenty two to six. Don't let him score, obviously, but not much you're going to do here unless you get a turnover real quick. Tucker, one timeout remaining. Southern's going to let all this time wind all the way down as much as they can. So the Rams are going to win their first game of the season. Now, K1 Clark, the ball carrier, and he gets down to about the 16 yard line, picks up three more. And Tucker's going to take their final timeout. Yeah. We do take a timeout here. And as we do that, Chris is going to take a look at the scoreboard. I'm going to try to get you an update on this Moorfield East Hardy game. Still 25 24. That's now moved into the fourth quarter. Uh, more scores in single A. That Petersburg game is one final. Page County, Virginia wins it 57 to 12. Wow. Still 12 7 Pocahontas, fourth quarter against Pendleton. Let's take a look at some AAA scores. Yes. Number one, Huntington, 49 0 over St. Albans, third quarter. Martinsburg's put 63 on the board. They lead Spring Mill 63 13 in the fourth. Universities extended their lead 56 0 over Buchanan, third quarter. Princeton. 14, Hedgesville 7 in the third. Cabell Midland has one. They beat GW 35 to 7. And Morgantown 21, Park South 7 in the third quarter. Willie Park has now taken lead on Musselman 17 14 in the fourth. In that Moorfield game, Chris, Mount Moorfield in the third quarter fumbled near the goal line. He's already recovered it. And then they throw a, a 99 yard touchdown pass. Wow. That's one of East Hardy's scores. Strouser keeps it off the right side and gets upended and tackled shy of the 10-yard line. Put him down at the 11. Should be a first down, and it is. First down, Rams. Gain of five for Strouser. So in that game, Moorfield really should be up two scores, but only up one point. 99-yard touchdown pass. How about that? <laughs> I wonder if Dawson Price is playing for East Hardy. No, he's that been out. That was him. That was him. Well, there you go. He's it. back. Okay, well, he's been out. yards. He's been out for the last few games, and he's back tonight. Southern will probably run maybe one more play and call tonight. We'll see. They're back in their standard wing T formation. And they're going to hand it off. And here comes Clark, and he bulldozes his way down to the close to the five-yard line, maybe just shy of it. Let's see if they try to score or if they kneel it here. And a six for Clark. Do the sportsman-like thing. 58 and turning. And they may go victory here. I know I would if it were me. Been a while since Tucker's beaten Southern. And they're going to stay in their standard formation. I, I would be a little bit upset if they score here if you're Tucker. They're letting the play clock wind down. Quarterback under center. Strouser. Turns, they're going to hand it off, and it's Clark. Clark's going to be stopped, spun into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow. I'm a little surprised they ran that play. That's, yeah, I, uh, am, I am too. That's – um. Well, I take it back. I go back to if Coach Rapp wouldn't have called the timeout, they may not have ran yeah, that play. But that's, 
But still, that's that's kind of bush league there. You probably shouldn't have ran that play. And five yard touchdown for K1 Clark. I don't quite understand that. 34 seconds to go. 28 to six is now the score. And they'll go for two, which again in this situation is why do you go for two? Up 28-6 of 34 seconds to go in the game. And they hand it off, and Tucker stops Sloan at the one-yard line. But the point is, why go for two in this situation? Why score? 34 seconds left. Yeah, I mean, I'm just being honest here. I got nothing against Southern. I got nothing against anybody. It's just that's the gamemanship and the sportsmanship of the game. 28-6, 28-6, Southern, 34 seconds to go, and Tucker County will regroup and head to Glen Vegas next week. Yep, and doesn't get any easier as, like you said, Gilmer County, pretty good team this year, and a tall task for this Tucker County team as they will head to Glenville. And then they will return home. For the last two games of the regular season, the uh, October 29th game here against Petersburg, and then you know, in the season with a November 5th contest against South Harrison here, that will be senior night, I'm sure, for Tucker County, who has a few seniors on this year's team, not very many, but uh, Southern now set to kick it away for after that touchdown. 400 yards rushing tonight for the Rams. Unless they get the ball back, but that's where it steps. Far side of the field picked up by Tucker, and the return, a good one out to the 40-yard line, out of bounds on the far side. I think that was Jared Real, it was. And the uh, fellow broadcasting crew next door complaining about the setup here in the press box, which... You know, I've been all over the place, and this is this setup here is beautiful. It's one of the they, better press boxes in the state. I, I actually think they said they liked the setup. I, think. I don't know. I heard a little bit the other way around. Maybe so. not. <laughs> I was giving the benefit I, of the doubt. I, I hope I hope you're right, <laughs> and I hope I'm wrong. Well, we've been we've been a lot of places, and you've been more than me. And this is one of the best places there is. Yeah. I, I, you know, and, I and I'm biased because this is home, but uh, there's not too many others that's as good as this one, far as. Yeah, where you're at in the field, we got a door now, so which is really great. <laughs> uh, so we like it. Far side, good run by Jared Real across the 40, out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Give him seven yards. 56 total now for Real on 13 carries. Seven seconds now left in this. Contest. 400 yards rushing for the Rams tonight. Zero yards passing. And that's going to do it. 28 to 6 is the final score. Southern Garrett, Maryland. Congratulations to them. They win their first game of the season. Tucker County drops to 2 and 5. And we have work to do in our this post-game Tucker County show. Sports. We'll come back com. with the final stats and more right after this on TuckerCountySports.com. On broadcast is being brought to you by Pat A. Nichols, attorney at law. Proud to support Tucker County Sports. Jim's All-Star, hot food, cold beverages, and gas. Mike Rosenall, Tucker County Commissioner. Wishing all of Tucker County High School Mount Lion athletes a safe and successful season. Atkins Home Center in Southern States of Parsons. Performance Collision with locations in Parsons and Morgantown. Robert Estates Incorporated, serving all of your general contracting needs. Fargo Insurance Group, Tucker County's nationwide insurance agent. United Financial Service, Auto Life Commercial Insurance and Annuities. This Tucker County Sports.com broadcast is also being brought to you by Mr. Pizza of Parsons. Home of the Mr. Big. More than just pizza. Try our subs, salads, and wings. Riccatelli Fencing and Lumber Company, your local rustic fence provider. 
Kidwell Auto Parts, with locations in Parsons and Thomas. Bob Gutshaw, your local State Farm insurance agent. Cortland Acres, choose us for your long-term care, rehab, and therapy needs. Mountain Valley Bank, locations in Parsons, Elkins, and Mill Creek. Sirianni's Cafe, with locations in Davis and Canaan Valley. And by Community Care Pharmacy. And now back to more exciting Tucker County High School action. Right here on your home of the mountain lines. TuckerCountySports.com Well, the story of the game is rushing the football. And nine times out of ten, when you have more yards rushing, you win the football game. And that is the story tonight. Southern Garrett, Maryland, with 400 yards of total rushing offense tonight. Tucker County, 40 Four yards rushing. There you go, Dave. That in lies the difference. You're out rushed 400 to 44. Uh, Ethan Rosenall tonight, 12 for 29 passing for 183 yards, threw a touchdown, threw an interception. Leading receiver for Tucker tonight, racer channel, five catches, 83 yards, and a score. Maddox Anderson, four catches, 87 yards. Wesley Strawman had a catch for six. J.J. Knotts, one catch for eight. And Jared Real, catch for minus one yard. Leading rusher for Tucker, Jared Reel, 13 carries, 56 yards rushing. J.J. Knott, 6 carries, 17 yards rushing. Ethan Rosenall, sacked a few times, 4 carries, minus 22 yards. And a team loss of 7 yards in the first half, so 44 yards rushing tonight. For Southern Garrett, Maryland, leading the way rushing-wise was Austin Spiker. 25 carries, 230 yards, and 2 touchdowns. Uh, K1 Clark, 17 carries, 80 yards and a score. Tyler Strauser, 6 carries, 36 yards and a touchdown. And a Braden Sloan, 13 carries for 64 yards, all in all, 400 yards rushing. Strauser was officially 0 for 2, passing tonight, 0 yards. Total offense, 400 yards for the Rams. Tucker County, 227. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Southern did what they needed to do to get this win. Tied at 6 for the longest time. Tucker County uh, unable to... Uh, get things going and or get their offense going in the second half and uh, Southern got to hand it to them. They did what they needed to do to to uh, win this game. Got the uh, rushing attack going and uh, found something in that second half and scored twice there in the fourth quarter. What three times in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter uh, after that turnover interception and they get the win and uh, hats off to them. Their first win of the season. Tucker County uh falls to two and what five two and five and 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 we talked about the second half tucker county was we wanted them to try to score in that first possession in the second half they did not but they had a decent drive came up empty but you knew if we couldn't get something on the board in that second half the more we gave southern the football the more time they had to wear us down defensively and they did that with their running game tonight ultimately in the fourth quarter they wore us down bottom line yeah they did our defense played way too much in the in the first half and then also in the second half wore us down and then you know just could not get the running game going to balance out the passing game and then on the passing uh, we just couldn't connect when we needed to and uh you know give southern credit they got some pressure on ethan rosenauer got him uh where he wasn't comfortable in the pocket and uh they do what they need to do to get the win they come in more motivated than tucker county and they walk away and from parsons with the win uh, and that's it. I mean, we you know we we, we can talk about it for a while, but uh, that's the bottom line. Our next broadcast of Tucker County football will be in two weeks. We'll have the Petersburg game here uh, against Petersburg on October the 29th, and we'll have that for you here from RH Armstrong Memorial Field, right here on YouTube Live and TuckerCountySports.com. Uh, Tune in, and we'll have that game for you. Our next broadcast of Tucker County Sports will be volleyball as the volleyball team will host uh, Moorfield on the 21st. We'll have that one for you on YouTube Live. Also, the volleyball team will host Petersburg on the 28th for the last match of the season. Uh, So tune in to those volleyball matches as we will have that call for you. If If not the call, we'll have the YouTube Live for you. Uh, to view for everybody at home. Chris, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure to us to get back together like old times and uh, 
call a football game. Uh, probably the next time we'll be together. Maybe a middle school game yeah, here coming up. Cape and Bridge. Never know with COVID. Who knows? And Tucker Valley uh, going to uh, Tangle, it sounds like. So, yeah, n- you never know with COVID with you doing Bridgeport football. But nonetheless, uh, if not, we'll be together again in basketball season. That's for sure. One quick thing. One quick final. Pocahontas held on. Beat Pendleton 12-7. Fourth quarter, what was the scoring margin in the fourth quarter in this game, Dave? What was the score at the end of three? I, know, I think Southern scored all their points in the fourth quarter. In the three was 6-6. Six, six. There you go. They scored yep. all their points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, the 75-yard touchdown run was big. And then they got 11-yard touchdown run uh, with 3.04 left in the fourth. And then they got that interception, ran it back, and then they scored from one yard out with 34 seconds left to make yeah. it the final 28-6. to six. Final score very – Indicative of how this game was, to say at least, 6-6 six, six game going the fourth, and we got beat. That's it. All right, folks, that's it. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Thank Chris George. This has been Dave Helmick, and we'll uh, talk to you next time here on Tucker County Sports and YouTube Live for Tucker County Football. Good night, everybody.